Welcome to the After Show Show for episode 88. If this is your first time tuning in, this is not the main episode. We are the fingertips of the main episode, where we talk about leftover songs or random topics of interest. Now, this episode will be a special one because it will be all about Produce 101, yep. um, a Korean reality competition show, which we yeah. Talked about a fair bit of in our main episode, yes, we and uh, if you don't know what that is, stay tuned uh, because you're gonna want to watch this show. Yeah, it, it's one of the shows that, um, at first, it seems like you really won't get into it because there's a lot of shows that seem like they're similar, but this show is very different in my opinion. Yeah, when when I describe when we describe the show to you, you're gonna be like, "This sounds dumb. Mm -hmm. Why would I ever watch this?" But if you stick around and and hear some of our thoughts. Uh, I think it'll change your mind. Uh, we will have a spoiler-free section, mm -hmm. but we will be very, very clear when we uh, reach the spoiler section. Um, uh, so just in case you're afraid of spoilers, you can still listen. Yeah. We will not spoil anything for you because yeah. I'm really anal about spoilers. Yeah, like Steven is super pet peevy about spoilers, so hopefully you don't care like me. I mean, you care about spoilers. I do, You just but... don't care as much as I do. Like yeah. I, for example, I don't watch trailers. Yeah. Right. Um, luckily, we live in Korea, and they don't play trailers in front of movies. Sometimes they do. Um, Sometimes they do, but uh, not for the really big movies. I don't think. Okay. Yeah. I, I I I've never seen one mm. uh, before. Yeah. Um, and uh, so in America, when trailers would come on, I would like close my eyes and close my ears. He's like the like the primary school like. La, 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 yeah, I do, la, and you ha and you have to hum because yeah. if you don't hum, like you can hear the, people's the, the reactions. Sound, or the, the sound is so loud that yeah. you can hear everything. Um, uh, now, there is one big thing of news that mm. did happen, and that is um, that Minzy di is leaving 21. Yeah. That now, the reason she left is still kind of he said, she said. Yeah. Um, but 21, according to YG, they are coming back in May-ish uh, as a three-woman yeah. team. Yeah, in a couple um, months. But uh, we're, we'll probably talk about that a lot more in the next After Show show. Yeah. But we had already designated this as the yeah. produced one. Yeah. Um, but we do know that happened, mm -hmm. and if you didn't know, now you know, and yeah. that's kind of sad because you know it's just one another, another of the old guard kind of getting their blows. You know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, let's talk about produce. So, okay. Um, let's just start with like the the overall concept of the show, right? All so, right. produce one hundred and one. Maybe you didn't listen last episode. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a reality competition show where they take a hundred and one trainees from all poop ton of uh, uh, trainee companies yeah. um, with some big name ones, some small name ones, yeah. um, no SM, no IG. Um, but there is uh, JYP, there is Lowen. There's Starship. Yeah, there's um, Starship. Like there are some, there's Cube. Yeah. Um, there are some you've heard of, um, but most of them are from places you've probably never heard of. Yeah. And some of these girls have debuted before. Mm -hmm. um, most of them, though, have been training for five, six, ten years yeah. and they've never debuted. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so the, the whole point of the show is for them to uh, win uh, or to be a part of the top 11 because yeah. at the end of the show, uh, 11 of these girls will form a project group for one yeah. year where they'll promote together. And then after that one year, uh, according to their plan, they're all going to go back to their agencies and then do what they <laughs> And then hopefully they take that momentum that they, they had with this group and then their agencies can debut them, etc, yeah. uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this show is produced by Mnet and Mnet does a lot of shows like this. Um, famous uh, Unpretty Rap Star, they do Show Me The Money. Um, I think one of the... One uh, they of do the a lot of like, they music. produce the, the, the Twice, uh, they produce yeah. 16. Yeah. Um, I think they even produced the, like the winner one, mix mm -hmm. and match. Like they do these things a lot. Yeah, kind of like um, a, we'll call them documentaries, but not really documentaries. Kind of just like they're they're filming these idols or these like kind of trainees like off stage life. We'll say sure, but oh. it is still very scripted to a degree. Yeah, yeah. like th this one is. We're gonna get to that, but mm -hmm. this one's very different than the you know show me the money mm -hmm. and um pretty rap star which are the biggest shows that the most people have seen yeah um those shows are very very clearly um edited for drama right mm -hmm. for especially on pretty rap star like oh yeah it i'm um, pretty rap star literally half the show is just facial shots of like disgust like we actually like, yeah mm -hmm. um 
And so you. when Produce came out, mm -hmm. both Josh and I were like, uh, we're not going to watch this. Like, Unpretty yeah. Rapstar 2 was so bad. Yeah. Um, I don't even, did you even ever start on Pretty Rap Star 2? I, I only watched clips and from those clips I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna watch the show. Okay. Like I watched the first half and like it was so bad that I could I couldn't even finish it. Mm. Um and, and I enjoyed on Pretty Rap Star 1 for its mm. kind of like MTV like trashiness. Yeah. Um Show Me the Money 5 was Show Me 4. Sorry, yeah. yeah I always four. Make, make that mistake. Five's coming out, that's why he's confused. Yeah. Uh, Show yeah. Me the Money 4 was um also not great, although it is mm. edited a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but like the overall structure of the quote unquote competition of Show Me the Money yeah. is really bad. Yeah. And um, also the editing, I think, for those shows are really yeah. bad. Yeah. And that's why Steven and I were really kind of turned off to it at first. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these kind of shows because like we didn't even watch 16, which is twice yeah. his thing. And we were really, really on that twice. Uh, I am probably gonna watch that. Uh, now. I might, I might, I might go um, back and watch it just because of this show. Yeah, I wanna, yeah. I wanna know about this one girl. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, so you know, if you're like us and you're like, oh my god, like why would I ever want to watch it? I, we do want to be very clear and say this show is nothing so like any of those. Yeah, it might. I don't know how similar it is to Sixteen because we didn't watch Sixteen. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this show, like, there's a tiny, tiny bit of. Drama, like, yeah, it, but the dramas for the most part seems very natural and yeah. not forced. Yeah. And and maybe only 10% of the show is about drama, yeah. and 90% of it is like about hard work, yeah. it's about camaraderie, cooperation, yeah. cooperation like teamwork, teamwork, and like it like is encouraging such one another. It is so great, yeah. It is like so. All shows and all things that like have a director. The director is trying to like show something through the way they like kind of you know edit things or the way they shoot things or angles and lighting and all that and this show i felt uh the director was really trying to show like trainees supporting each other yeah and how hard the life is yeah. of a trainee and yeah. how much work they have to put in yeah um and you know uh well let's just start by talking about general thoughts of mm -hmm. the overall series so like josh what did you like i guess about Produce 101, but without mm -hmm. giving any spoilers away. Like, what was your favorite parts about the show? I think my favorite parts w about the show was that if people don't know what a trainee's life consists of, or like the hardships that they go through, and they only see like the K-pop groups, um, this is a really good show to kind of understand like hardships. Mm. Um, I mean, it's a bit exaggerated because yeah, it uh, is. You have to you have to take it with a grain of salt because the director's kind of motive is kind of to play up this, you know, this. They're trying to play on your heartstrings, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it was well done to a point where it does play on my heartstrings, mm -hmm. and there were times where I was like really kind of like teary eyed because Stephen and I have been fans have been fans of K-pop for a really long time. We know how hard groups work. We know how hard training life is. And just seeing that kind of portrayed in the show really kind of made me feel like really attached to these trainees. Yeah, and it's yeah. kind of you know I I I don't really cry ever, mm. um, and it's not because like I'm a man and I don't cry. Mm. I just I just don't I just don't yeah. do it. Just I never it, have. Yeah. Just also, emotional wise, you're just not that kind of emotional. Person. Also, I'm a, you know, I'm just manly. Come on, dude. You're supposed to counter with I'm so manly. It makes total sense. Um, Oh, my, throat, my throat was so dry. Yeah, you couldn't even lie for me there. You had to drink some Coke. Um, so dry. But, so I, I don't normally ever cry, but like I teared up so much during mm -hmm. this show. Like yeah. at least once an episode, I was teary eyed. Yeah. Like, it, and, and not, and it's not because it was like forcefully like sad. It, it was just like watching these girls kind of, um, working so hard for their dream yeah. right it, yeah it's not that they're just working hard it's like they're working so hard uh for this thing that's so incredibly hard yeah. to obtain right which yeah. is to be a k-pop yeah. star and so like if you do watch shows that kind of try to you know play on these heartstrings and like try to like make you feel a certain emotion um it can get a little bit kind of overused at times but this show like it has a really good balance of like stark reality and also this kind of fairy tale dream mm. right mm. where it's like oh i'm working hard for my dream i'm training really hard right and that's really heartwarming and that's very like encouraging but at the same time 
they like sl slap you in the face and be like, okay, but don't forget, there's only going to be 11 of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100 of you or 90 of you. Sorry, yeah. my math is shitty. It's cool. Just I just used to be a math teacher. Whatever. Um, 90 of them <laughs> are uh, not going to make it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, the other thing that I love about the show is that um, unlike I'm Pretty Rap Star and unlike Show Me The Money, mm -hmm. like this... Uh, this dedicates so much time to one challenge, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. you get to see them from, you get to see, like the episodes are long, right? Mm -hmm. Each episode is an hour and a half At to least an, an hour and a half, 45. Yeah. Um, it is a long, long dang show. Yeah. Um, there's 11 episodes. Um, so that's a good old chunk of your life yeah. to watch all and of the them. the finale is like two and a half hours as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but there's only three challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, Three, three well, or four, there's four kind of eliminations, but it's a little bit, yeah. Um, but let, let's just say there's four, right? Like, it, that's a solid two to three episodes of, like, watching them mm -hmm. go from A to B to C to D. And you really get to dive in and, and, and see these girls, which is something that Show Me The Money is especially bad at. Yeah. They're really bad. Um, they have, like, a 10-minute montage yeah. uh, every episode. It's yeah. like, bam, we have a new song. Um, yeah. Uh, and so when they come out with this performance, you're just like, damn, like, I just saw them, like, mm -hmm. really suck at it. I saw them be okay at it. Um, mm -hmm. Now, there is, of course, some storyline editing. There's always yeah. a storyline of, yeah. like, whether it's forced or not, uh, yeah. it's always like, so-and-so did this wrong at this time. Yeah. Will she do it wrong in yeah, the main, yeah. you know? Yeah. But you're so in there. You're like, yeah. I, hope, I hope she doesn't mess up. I hope she doesn't mess up. Yeah, but sometimes um, it does, like, betray your expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. And yeah, I, think does. That's, I think that's necessary. And the thing I really like about this show compared to like Show Me The Money or like I'm Pretty Rap Star is that even though they have 101 girls, the majority of the show is like interviews. Majority mm. of the show is kind of just like talking to the trainees or like trying to get them to write their experiences or their feelings and mm. or like explain like, you know, the hardships and their situations. And so like as you go on through the show, there are certain girls that you already know their backstory because they like weave the story in really well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they do like, if I want to say one bad thing is that mm -hmm. I, they, well, it's not even bad. It makes total sense for a show like this, but yeah. they do focus on certain girls, certain girls yeah. you Be know. Because there are 101. You yes. Can't, and, yeah. and even though they casted 101, they knew when they casted 101 that 50 of them were absolutely not even remotely have a chance, right? Yeah. Um, so they definitely do focus on like 30 to 40-ish girls. Um, there, there was definitely a time, even when they got to like the top 22, I was mm -hmm. like, I kind of only know like 15 maybe, 10 yeah. of them. Like, yeah. um, but you know, there's a lot of girls. Um, the, the, the good thing is if, if, if you could read Korean, every time a girl talks, it puts up their name oh, yeah. and what ranking they are, but they don't always translate that to English. So if you can't read Korean, maybe you're like, I don't know who this is, I don't know who this is. Yeah, I, yeah. This is that girl with that face, right? Yeah. Um, but, uh, like, I think the coolest part about this show, um, I guess this is for every one of these shows, but, mm -hmm. like, you definitely find girls that you you like and you yeah. root for and you yeah. want them to succeed. And uh, because you spend so much time with them as they're practicing, experiencing mm -hmm. hardships, working together, like, you really feel a connection. Mm -hmm. um, you feel like what I like to call the K-pop connection right like k-pop is very special um compared to certain other types of like you know western music or western pop music mm. because k-pop fans and k-pop groups they have this kind of like i wouldn't say bond but more of like a they have an affection for the members mm. besides just music yeah and like these type of shows really kind of get you to go in on these girls like kind of affection and yeah. bonding wise right yeah like, if you watched maybe Mix and Match, mm -hmm. then you have that affection for Icon or Winner, mm -hmm. right? If you watch 16, then you have that affection for Twice. Like, yeah. um, and, and Steven and I really works. try to avoid these shows because we don't want that bias when we're listening and, like, kind of doing our, our podcast because yeah. we don't want to just be clouded and be like, oh, because we like these members, we automatically like their songs. I'm going to fully admit that I went, I went, deep, in, oh, I went yeah. deep into a into a k-pop <laughs> rabbit hole that i have not been in in a long 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 time like yeah. i like twice we've talked about how much we like oh, twice yeah. Oh, yeah. but like i didn't go in the rabbit hole with twice no right like i didn't, did I. I didn't watch all the performances i didn't like you know I, my life wasn't twice right mm -hmm. i would think about it twice every once in a while uh 
But for the last like week and a half, my life has been produced. produced. <laughs> like yeah. all the songs that I'm listening to, I is I have a produced playlist of this mm -hmm. six songs, and that's all I've listened to yeah. in the last two. And I'm guilty of that as well. Um, so yeah. I, we yeah. we've been watching. Another great thing about the show is that so they have these four big performances, mm -hmm. and really the the first one is the first one, but it's the second one and the third one are the really big ones. Mm -hmm. And they have individual fan cams for every single performance. Wonderful. Um, and so Wonderful. like one day I watched, you know, this one song nine times, the just same performance see. nine times of nine different mm -hmm. girls yeah. just to see it. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? Yeah. Like, I, another thing I really like about this show is that the challenges and like the kind of evaluations that they do are very, they make a lot of sense for one. Yeah. Like um, they're not doing some like crazy, like kind of, you know, challenge that has nothing to do with like being a trainee or trying to debut as a group, right? Mm -hmm. Like the challenges and roadblocks that they set up are things that like you need to overcome if you want to be part of a K-pop group. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, they get, they have it slightly harder because like, mm -hmm. like some of the challenges, like they themselves have to choreograph an entire song, mm -hmm. which is not something most trainees probably have to do, right? Yeah. Um, some of them have to rearrange a song yeah. and like come up with a brand new version of a song yeah. to sing. And that's also not something that a lot of Chinese do. Um, but, but, that, but I think that's good. No, no, yeah. it's great. I, I want to mention that like um, this also, the, watching this show really shows how good trainees are nowadays. Yeah. Right? Like, Very talented. Like one of, like, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that one of the challenges involves singing the debut songs of a bunch of girl groups in yeah. the past, right? Yeah. And like, you know, you, 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 you're you watching them sing, you know, Wonder Girls, you know, Irony, and you're like, you know, I love the Wonder Girls, right? Yeah. They're my first, you know, first baby, love. right? Yeah. I love it, right? But like, you know, Sunye can sing, you know, so can yeah. Yeun, like they can yeah. sing, but like, damn, they, like, <laughs> damn, some of these, like, some of these, some of these trainees are like sing. so good. Yeah. Um, uh, it really shows the high quality of, of, yeah. of, of what you have to be nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be able to sing and dance, uh, sing and dance at the same damn time. Like, that's another good thing mm -hmm. is that for a, all the performances, or at least the first couple, like, they make them sing and dance. Yeah. Uh, and and they have to do it at the same time. There's there's no lip syncing. Yeah. You know, lip singing. Like you actually see them. Sometimes it's not even that great of a yeah. audio performance, but like that makes sense, right? Yeah. They they they're making them do it, making them learn all in a couple of a uh, couple of weeks. Um, yeah. And um, hopefully, it's kind of, it's so hard to, to speak without um, spoiling spoilers. anything. Yeah. Um, so by now you've probably heard the Pick Me song. We're gonna talk yeah. more in detail of all the songs, and you're gonna yeah. hear hear some of them. Uh, if you want to, we're gonna put some spoiler yeah. things on there. But um, so like the Pick Me song, I remember we saw the music video a long, long time ago because they released that video before really the show started. Mm -hmm. um, and we were like, this song is garbage. Uh, this I want to say it's garbage. It was it was. It was kind of like a bad addiction. You would hear it everywhere. It gets stuck in your head, and you wouldn't want it to be. No, that happened. Yeah, I'm not. But I, I very re remember uh, the first time we watched it, and we were like, "This is a really, really bad." Why, yeah, because why a, lot the fuck are we watching this? a lot of them can't sing. A lot of them can't sing. We, we were like, oh, awful, awful. Like, dance is not, not good. Blah, 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 it not is good. not good. Yeah. And there's too many girls. I don't understand this. This is yeah. dumb. I'm not gonna watch it. Right. Yeah. But like. Watching the first couple episodes of this show like really made me appreciate that song. <laughs> yeah, it really did. Like it, it is. It was such a genius pick because the song is like subtly like it's actually kind of hard to sing because the, yeah. the the there are the high octave parts in it. Yeah. is really high. Um, the dance is not the dance is easy enough that the girls can learn it mm -hmm. um, in a small span of time, but, but hard it's hard enough, enough for not all the trainees to learn it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Like you can really see the different the mm -hmm. differentiation. Right. It's not too easy. Right. It's yeah. not too hard. It, it was like just right. It really made me appreciate that song um, yeah. way, way, way more. Yeah. Um, uh, do, should we talk about like the things we didn't like about the show? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. So one thing that I didn't like about the show is that there were times that I felt they were trying to introduce uh, drama. Or yeah. kind of conflict into the show when I felt it was unnecessary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, some of the challenges are weirdly designed, and mm -hmm. like for example, they always have to choose a center. Yeah. Um, 
And the way they do it is so like, we really want to create drama right now. Like you need a jujitsu center right now, right away. Yeah. Please argue. Someone yeah. please, you know. Um, and most of the time, like, they, they, it, it they, fails. It, 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 it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, like the girls um, are just like so supportive of each other. No. And they, none of, none of them are really kind of like, F you, I'm pull your hair out to be a center. Like no. all, it's a good balance of the girls are, are really driven and they really have this desire to debut, but they kind of have this innocence about them of like, I'm not going to like, you know, smush my my teammate to the ground in order for me to be a center. You know? Yeah, and it's also Korea, right? Like yeah. in Korea, right? If, if someone's older, it's really hard to stand up to them because of the culture here. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, for um, a competition show, like they really try to emphasize competition, but it kind of fails. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of that has to do with, like the other thing I didn't like is, um, so this show, we sh I guess we should have mentioned, there, there are no judges this show, right? Yeah. Like the the... It's the, a popularity vote. It is a popularity vote. You vote yeah. online or you vote live, like, it is 100% a, according to Mnet. Who knows if there's any trickery involved. But yeah. it's 100% user voted, right? Yeah. Um, and so when you win a challenge, sometimes you get a bonus number of votes. Mm -hmm. And, like, I thought, I think they really didn't think through um, the way bonus votes yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. Um, because part of it is the unexpected popularity of the oh, show. Yeah. So they weren't really... Because the way they film it, right, it's time skewed. So they, for the first couple of challenges, they guess too low, mm -hmm. right? They're like, you get so-and-so number of bonus votes, but so many people watch the show mm -hmm. that those bonus votes did almost nothing. Yeah, but um, like, it, that's also kind of like really, really funny, right? Because um, you don't want them to overshoot, right? You'd rather have them undershoot right. it. And... Just to see like some of the girls' reactions about like how many votes they get, like they really seem genuine, like not yeah. really kind of forced reactions. They're like, I didn't know we were so popular. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and, but like, and then they by the third challenge they overshot it, mm -hmm. and that also really skewed the results really badly. I mm -hmm. think for the the third and almost final one. Mm -hmm. um, so I was a little let down on that. I think they could have used a little bit more math and figured out like a kind of more percentage yeah. bonus instead of like a flat number because you never know who how many people are going to vote every week, right? Yeah. So it, it, and maybe that's just the math teacher yeah. and me. And we kind of do cut them a little bit of slack because, you know, the, the kind of like scale from the first vote to like the second bonus votes, like yeah. it, it increased by like tenfold. Yeah. Well, yeah. and then they try to rectify because, like, originally you can vote, like American Idol, I think, you can vote. So you can vote for seven people once every a, day. Once a day, yeah. Right? Um, and then they changed it to just one person per every day. day yeah. they, the, the, because the votes are, like, exponential. It's yeah, like, because I think they realize, uh, like, oh, yeah, Korean fans are sometimes really, really crazy. Yeah. Like. They'll even, they'll get their, like, grandmother to vote seven times for, you know. Yeah. Um, another, I think, bad thing is that, like, like, for example, uh, one of my friends from home, he watched it. Mm -hmm. um, and he is, I was surprised that he watched it because he's usually not into this did you, kind did of stuff. Did you prompt him to watch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, uh, I was telling another friend that, I was telling Kelvin, mm -hmm. who... I used to do this podcast with to to watch it, and he saw it on Slack and was like, mm. "Oh, I'm gonna." It sounds interesting, right? Because yeah. um, he watches Running Man, he watches some of that stuff, yeah. so he he's like, "Oh, Korean hot girls, okay, let me try." Right. right, I got no, nothing to do. Let me watch it, mm. um, and he enjoyed the show, but like he he thought that there was just too much crying. He thought because there's a lot of crying, there right? Is a the, lot of it's, crying. it's really hard for the girls. A lot of them yeah. cry, um, but this he, a very difficult time he kind well. of thought that it was just like too much crying. He got kind of tired and annoyed at all, all the crying um i didn't have that problem like i didn't have that nine problem. times out of ten when they were crying i, I was, was like, tearing up um okay but if you're a person that like when you see like girls crying over and over and over again you're like yeah basically if you're heartless then like yeah, Kelvin got no heart <laughs> oh it was my other friend kelvin oh, kelvin okay. hasn't watched it yet mm. um because that that i don't i don't know why he hasn't watched it yeah if you're heartless like it. you know steven's friend yeah his um, name's steven too oh that's weird is it the ph it's a V. Oh, okay. And my friend's brother is also named Steven, um, which is why everyone called me with my last name when I was growing up. Uh, uh, so I sense. actually, it wasn't until I moved to Korea that I went by Steven because mm. nobody ever called me Steven. Yeah. So um, 
Um, another kind of negative that I have about the show that Steven doesn't share with me is that s since it is like 100% popularity, mm. like um, I didn't want it to be 100% popularity. Mm. I, I wanted it to be partly uh, like majority po like popularity vote. Mm. Uh, but I do wish it was like maybe like 20% like judge kind of um, input mm. or kind of like expert input. Yeah. Because um, I feel like those experts or those judges, um, you know, are watching them, you know, practice or watching them like work hard mm -hmm. and they see things that we don't see. Yeah. And so I would like some of their input into yeah. it. Not in, not so much that it will like just totally yeah, overcome. Like 70, 70, 30. Yeah, or maybe like 70, 30 80, or 80, 20. 20. Um, that's what, something I would like because, uh, you know, sometimes with directing and when you have like 101 girls like mm. only so many girls can have FaceTime and like have their stories yeah they told. find the best storylines or the yeah. prettiest girls and, yeah. and they get get more screen like yeah. there's probably 40 girls that you've probably only seen on screen like less yeah. than a minute like there is some um, sort of like bias there um yeah. which is understood which is why I would like to counter it with like maybe a 20% or 30% judge vote that's just me yeah, I don't agree with that because, mm. like, if you're going to use popularity, I think you just go all the way. Because, mm. like, I, I think if you do 70, 30, it's not going to matter. Mm. Like, it might matter if they were picking one winner. Mm -hmm. um, but that. if you're picking 11 people, I don't think it matters yeah. that much. Yeah. Um, and also, um, like, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, like, half and half about it because the, the group that they are debuting is only, like, a one-year project group. Yeah. So having a hundred percent popularity doesn't bother me so much because it's just like, okay, well, they're kind of like, their main goal is to kind of promote these 11 girls and kind of and give them want, some momentum the into debuting. Most popular girls, right? With, their, like, with, their, with the real group, right? Yeah. Or with the real kind of like, you know. You're not so, finding a group that's going to be together for 12 yeah, years, yeah. right? Like if, like if it's a group, 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 like that's going to be promoted together for like, you know, good, mm -hmm. then I would like... I would like more so judge votes, but since it is just like a one-year project group, I am more okay with it being 100% popularity. Like, like that's the thing. Like, if it was like if it was K-pop star mm -hmm. and you're trying to find the best singer, mm -hmm. then that I think judge is very important because, because, yeah. you know, usually in popularity contests, the pretty girl wins, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think if you're judging like a by ability, like K-pop star or superstar K or something like American Idol. Mm -hmm. Well, American Idol also uses um, kind of popularity, popularity vote. Yeah. Um, I've actually never watched the full thing of American Idol, so I actually don't even know like what happens when they reach the top ten. Do mm. they do a split, or the judges completely go away? Well, I know they still judge, yeah. but because they're the ones that pick who stays and goes for the most part. I yeah. think up until the top ten, I think. I think so. I think at the top ten they switch. Doesn't matter. Um, like I think if you're trying to find the next Big Bang, mm. right? Like you need some judge input, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you're just trying to find 11 girls in in a temporary group you mm -hmm. you, you just want the mo te 11 most popular ones like yeah. that makes a lot of sense to me so yeah. I, I don't really mind it yeah that much. i think the reason why i it kind of like nagged at me a little bit is because the way the show is directed or kind of themed that it makes it seem like this group that they're like debuting is like a debuting group mm. right and that's kind of like the the I think really there's another out. reason, but I think that's a spoiler reason. Mm, okay, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we'll th there is later. a reason. I know there's a very specific yeah. reason he, uh, th that bothers him, yeah. um, but we'll talk about it in the spoiler section. Yeah. Um, but I think overall, like, you know, this is a long talk. Maybe you've already decided not to watch it, or maybe you've decided to watch it. Um, but, like, if you have time, um, I, I, I think you should really, really check this out. Like, yeah. even if you hate American Idol, you hate sit. those type of things, like... I, I think this is the best, and you probably won't like me, because they're gonna do a guy version, right? Mm -hmm. But like the second time, ain't it's never the same as the first time. Yeah. You know, this first time, and hopefully, hopefully you haven't seen any spoilers, right, of who yeah. made it or not. But like, but this is like Star Wars Episode Four. I don't, I don't, Star Wars I don't, I don't know where you're going with that one. Star Wars Episode Four. Uh, In the trilogy of one. movies, like every trilogy, this is like the first movie that really will get you and like produce one-on-one -on -one boys version right or something like this is a i think a must watch in korean tv okay oh i don't start okay 
That's why I, it's the number one of any movie that came out. I don't know why, I don't know why you think Star Wars. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, I, I really recommend you watch it. And it, and it is not just Steven and I. Like, this was a hit in Korea. Like, the reason I watched it was partly because Steven was really kind of, like, recommending me to watch it. But it's because, like, all my Korean friends, all my Korean co-workers were talking about it. Were saying, like, oh, if you haven't watched it, you should watch it. You like it. And so I was like, so many people are recommending it to me. Like, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like, you know, looking at the numbers, it's not, it doesn't sound huge. Yeah. But, like, it's got, like, 4% on a cable network, um, which is which is pretty dang high mm -hmm. um, in, in Korea anyways. Um, and, like, um, you know... Show Me The Money was also really big. Like, yeah. everybody and their mother watched Show Me The Money. Um, and, and I feel this is very similar um, yeah. similar here. Um, all right, so now we are going to talk about the songs. Or in a second, we're going to talk about the songs. Yeah. Um, so if you're like me and you hate every spoiler possible, mm -hmm. then I would suggest you stop right now. Okay? Don't listen any further. Well, you should go watch the show. Then come back and finish watching this because yeah. we will talk in, in in detail about what we liked or didn't mm -hmm. like. Um, uh, but you know, if you're kind of half like Josh, where you're mm -hmm. like half spoilers, half not spoilers, we are going to talk about the songs. We are yeah. not going to talk about who is singing which song. Yeah. So we're not going to spoil any member stuff. Yeah. Uh, but but like, there's some really good songs here mm -hmm. um, that they, I would have, I definitely would have picked if they were in our podcast. Yes, definitely. we made a conscious decision not. Because I would have picked just five of these songs because I like them so much. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, though, that because I watched it first in the show, mm -hmm. I have a very specific connection to these songs with, yeah. with the show. The cape, I call it the K-pop bias. Well, but, but it, it, it's, like, further than that. Mm -hmm. Because it's, like... Like the K-pop by like most K-pop songs don't have a reality show tied to them. So. Mm, that's true. Uh, like, this is, like, when I... They have some experience or some feeling attached to these songs. Like when yes. you hear this song, you can like picture the scenes. I can picture the scenes. Yeah. I can picture um, like which you can get after watching a music video 700 times. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if you just heard the song first, it may not be as special to you. That sounds yeah. kind of dumb. But um, so if you care about that stuff, then then stop yeah. now. Come back later. Stop now. We're going to start talking about the songs. Yeah. Um, oh, I forgot though. Before we talk about the songs, hopefully I haven't shut off the podcast yet. Yeah. Uh, in the main episode, we did announce that we had started a Patreon, yeah. which um, again, if you're new, uh, is kind of a, a, a crowd donation kind of service. Yeah, I wouldn't um, call it crowdfunding because you're not funding something. Well, you're funding us, <laughs> right? You're, yeah. not, you're not buying anything. No. Uh, we're not promising you anything other than what our goal is. And our goal was for me to stay in Korea for another year so that mm -hmm. we can continue doing this podcast together in the same yeah. room. And uh, our goal was for $400. Mm -hmm. uh, I joked that we would only make like $10, $20, but that was a legit fear of ours. It was, yeah, it was a legit fear of ours. Um, and we are very, very happy to announce that we have made it to $162 at the time of this recording. In, in, a, in a week. In, in a week. week open, and really, really encouraging. It's crazy to me, yeah. absolutely crazy. Um, and so we, you know, most of those people are on our Slack channel, mm -hmm. which we talk to every day. Well, yeah. we're, some we're of, very active on that channel. We're trying to be very active, yeah. right? We're trying to be active, talk to people. Um, Slack is a little confusing. I think some people who haven't said much probably are a little overwhelmed by mm -hmm. it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not too late to go to patreon.com slash thisweekinkpop, links in the description below, to, uh, to help us reach 400. Because yeah. if we reach 400, we can continue doing awesome stuff like this. Bingo. Still feels really weird asking for money. But, yeah, it um, feels really like it feels really greasy. Like, yeah. Yeah. But That's, I don't I don't like it. But um, but 162 dollars like a month is already like higher than than our ex what I can yeah, what really, I dreamed of you know a month ago. Like like they like, really Stephen and I like we we're not joking when we say like 162 dollars is just is really mind blowing for yeah. us because. Um, Steven and I, you know, we are, we, we like to watch, watch a lot of streamers, uh, mm -hmm. and like video games. Steven also likes a lot of different podcasts, mm -hmm. but there will be so many times where we will appreciate the podcast or the streamer and we won't donate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and we might've been watching these guys for years, but we won't donate. And 
not because we don't support them or whatever, whatever, but it's just like. Actually, I makes sense. I because <laughs> of this Patreon, people donated to me. I actually donated to like three of the podcasts that I listen to the most because mm -hmm. I felt that like I can't ask for money yeah. from from loyal viewer or viewers slash listeners if I've never donated money yeah. to some of my favorite podcasts. Yeah. So um, I did do that, um, and maybe you should too. Hey, yeah. all right, let's move on. Feels weird. Feels weird, man. All right. Um, so now we are going to talk about the songs for Producer One Hundred One. So if you don't want the songs uh, from the show to be ruined and you kind of want to attach them to some sort of feeling, please stop here. Uh, we're going to talk about songs. Yes, yes, yes. So the very first song, of course, that we are going to talk about is by all 101 of them together uh, with Pick Me. Pick me, pick me, pick me. I don't know. I ain't a dancer. All right. Now, uh, pick me um, is kind of like you know. This is gonna be one of those songs where uh, a year later, and I say the word pick me in class by accident. So it's then gonna someone's gonna song. stand up and be like, pick me, pick me, pick me. Yeah. Or like, even if we say the word pick, it's the trigger. It's yeah. The trigger word. Yeah. Um, uh, but what do you think about what do you think about the song right now? Like, so right now, um. It is not my favorite song uh, from the show. There is about uh, seven, eight songs. There are seven uh, songs on this list. Uh, not including that last one. You didn't put that on the list. What last one? The last one that was a gift. I don't include that song because okay. it was a pile of trash. Okay. Also, it wasn't released as a single as far as I know. Okay. But uh, out of all the songs, this is kind of like middle of the road for me. Um, it's one very addictive, but not addictive in a good way. Because since all the girls are singing in it, I don't think all the girls sing it well. And there are some high parts in it, so it, it's very apparent for my ears that it's not yes. perfect. I don't know how to explain that. It, it has all the downsides you would expect of 101 100 people. girls singing it. Yeah. It, you know, uh, because at first, again, we were just talking about how like it just kind of sounds like they're kind of sing talking like chanting. they're chanting yeah. but not in a good way um but then when you hear them sing it by themselves in the show you're like there's actually some uh, quite some a bit of nuance yeah. to, to 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 be able to sing this song well um but i think that doesn't really translate uh that well because uh there's a hundred of them yeah um uh this is a song actually that like because i have a produced playlist of these seven songs that i just repeat endlessly um i do skip <laughs> just open it, Josh. <laughs> Josh my is opening is really a Coke dry. right now. My, my throat is really dry. Um, Sorry. He's going to drink directly from the Coke bottle. You can watch it live on YouTube. 
Well, not live, but you can watch it on YouTube if you want to see it. Um, <laughs> just look, drink it, John! I'm gonna look at you while I drink just it. Just drink it! Just drink it, cuz... <laughs> Don't look at me while I drink it. You keep talking. You can look at me. So people so people can't hear my drinking We're, we're lucky this is the after show, Josh. Please. We're lucky this is the after show, cuz if this is part of the main episode, I would freak out, man. But I'm so thirsty. <laughs> Trish, that's what I'm saying, just drink it! Put it in your mouth, make it go down your throat, <laughs> let's go! We Dude, shall wait. Can you, can you talk? We shall wait. I no. don't want people to hear We you shall wait. Oh, baby. I don't know if the, the audio is even picking up anything that of Josh is gulping, but it was good. It was good. Leave it open, Josh. Leave it open so it doesn't hiss later. Leave half, I'll leave it half open. God damn, so unprofessional. Well, after show is not supposed to be professional. That's why I do it. Yeah, that's true. Um... Uh, yeah, uh, long story short, I usually skip this song. Yeah. Uh, this is a song that 100% is performance based. Like when mm -hmm. I want, if I want to listen to this song, I want to watch the performance. Yeah. And a lot of these songs are like either better performance or they're better kind of like just listening to the song on its own. And uh, we'll, we'll try to like tell you which ones we feel are one and which ones are the other. But this song is definitely performance, like watching them perform it, watching them do the dance. It does bring up a lot of like emotions from the show. No, but you know, at first I really also didn't like that like the EDM kind of dance break. But like now That's I love part. it. That's, That's my favorite, favorite part. part. Yeah. Partially because the dance part is so like I can picture the dance part mm -hmm. since I've watched it so many times. Um, and partially because this song is played a billion times in the show, mm -hmm. and so you hear it a lot. Um, it has a like dun dun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ding, 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 ding. And also dun, it's tied dun. a lot to like the um, the revealing of rankings because mm -hmm. uh, I always play this song. So like uh, it, it just, you know, yeah. that's memory has is tied me to this. Um, and dun dun. Um, I definitely think in a vacuum like. Dun, dun. Um, God damn it, John! I'm trying to talk. <laughs> you, always, you always sing and shit. In, in and a it vacuum, fucks me in up. a vacuum, you wouldn't. Uh, in a vacuum, if I just heard this song mm -hmm. like we did, um, I would not like it at all. I would not like it at all. Yeah, I wouldn't like it at all. No. But because we got biased, because we gone did watch a twenty we gone did watch the thirty hour documentary about it, like uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, it's middle of the road. All right, talk about the next song. Dude. All right, so the next song uh, is called "Don't Matter." produced it or should we just leave that out I think it's okay to say who produced it I okay. don't think that matters okay so um the person who produced don't matter is actually Sonny mm -hmm. from uh, brand new music uh, he's our Mnet baby Mnet baby uh, and this is just like Sonny a kind of like hip-hop based song yeah um, but it was he says I think in the broadcast this is his first ever song for a girl group yeah um, but it is also my second least favorite song. It is not also that great for me. Mm. Um, so this song, um, I do feel like it is better, slightly better uh, performance than just listening to it straight up. Mm -hmm. um, just because you get to see the girls dancing and do all the things. Yeah. Cause you see the, 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 the shaking their bitties and... Uh, no, like I, I'm not sure if I don't like this song because of like bias reasons, like because I don't wasn't like emotionally girls. attached to the yeah. girls that performed this song at the time, 
or I just didn't like the song. Um, I thought the song was a little out of place. Um, I mm -hmm. thought it was just a little out of place, especially with this kind of style of show. But it does make sense that they would want one kind of hippity yeah, hop song. Because there are um, rappers who audition, who, there are rapper trainees yeah. in the show. So um, just having like all like G Friend type of songs or like, you know, SNST type of songs is like not really fair to them. Yeah, well, the entire show is not fair to the rapper people mm -hmm. because they make they make them majority, sing yeah. and they make them dance like any other girl group member, right? And it's like, it's like, but I'm a rapper. But some of the rappers have really great voices. So yeah, it, it, don't count them all out. And, and like some of the rappers, I think they would do better singing than rapping. Mm. That's just my opinion. Yeah, some of them, some yeah. of them. Um, but yeah, it's like this song. Like it does have its catchy parts, mm -hmm. right? The no, 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 no. You know, you, 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 um, you, 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 but. In the grand scheme of things, I thought it was just like I I I, I still listen to it. I, I still mm -hmm. think it's okay, um, but I, I think I, it's below average. Bo below average for these songs or below average in general? In general, oh, it's in a general? below average song. Yeah, I think on a normal episode, I, I might I might have picked this not for like the top two part, right? Just but like discuss. as a discussion part, I feel I like probably, I might have I might have I would pick pick this. I probably would include this in the podcast, but I wouldn't say it's like a song okay. that I really like, or I def and I definitely would not pick it for a song of the week. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. The next song is called 24 Hours. Confused, of course, with, with Sunny's 24, 24 Hours. Um, this is a totally different song. This song is made by the dudes who made Pick Me, which yeah. is like it's a very EDM kind of bass song, very or, Korean EDM. Yeah, very. Yeah, they're DJs, is what the kind of draw is. Yeah, yeah, and so this one's got a, a sick drop. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I actually, I think the mix of this song is really not good. Oh yeah, um, it sounds very like old timey and also very EDM-y. Yeah, Is that just me. No, it, it's like it's like a mix between like old timey Korean. Yeah, and like an old trot song and, and like, yeah, an EDM. But but also I I mean primarily the way they they mix the voices. Like mm. the voice volume is really low. It sounds like the girls are whispering, talking. Yeah. They're not even singing for some of it. Yeah. Um, but I think this song is benefits the most of watching it if you're watching performance, the performance yeah it is miles better because yeah. i think the choreography is so fun and so yeah. actually very simple that it makes a song way 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 yeah. better so i i have a problem with this song in general it's like probably one of the 
the worst songs out of this list for me. Mm. Uh, one, because like Steve had said, uh, the voices are not, not very audible. And like for me, like that's the most important part. Like mm -hmm. you want to hear the girls singing, you want to hear the girls, you want to watch the girls dancing. But this song really felt like the producer's song and they're just kind of like Along lending the their voices or like kind of like a, um, what, what's the word? Uh, like a, um, when a, when a, when a person first makes a song, they have someone kind of provide like a voice for them just to like a, like for the test track? Yeah, like a test track. There's a certain... Uh, there's a name for it. There's a name for it, but oh, it's just, it just is bothering me. I can't remember it right now. Um, I'll probably remember it later, but this song, like, it really sounded like the girls were that. Were mm -hmm. just there to, like, provide the skeleton and someone else was going to sing the like song. Someone else will fill in the finer details, yeah, right? Yeah, And um, I felt the same way when I watched the performance. Like, I really felt like the girls were kind of treated a little bit like backup dancers. And mm -hmm. I didn't really like that as well. Even though I do, like... A lot of the choreography, it looks really, really fun, but I didn't think the girls really got the shine with this kind of song, and I think that's a shame. Yeah, no, they definitely, especially vocally, um, they really didn't get the shine. It, actually, this song sounds like a song that like a group like Bambino or a group like one of those like dance, dance troupe group, yeah. troop groups might sing. Yeah. Um, because it's actually not really that singy. Yeah, like um, this song is like a would be like a song for people who don't really have strong singing or dancing skills. Which is weird because the girls that actually perform it, some of them do actually can can sing, and yeah. it's weird. Um, all right, well, let's talk about the next song, Josh. All right, so the next song is called Yum Yum. Yum 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 Yum. 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 By a dude who has his fingers and a lot of SM yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's he's an SM producer that has like a lot of kind of hands in like uh, EXO's like Love Me Right. I think he it's like helpful also in like Red Velvet. Um, but he's mainly an SM producer. Yes, yeah. yes, and that's part of the I think the coolest thing about some of the producers they mm -hmm. picked was that they picked SM producers yeah. uh, that you would think is locked in some dungeon only producing songs for SM, but yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. They have like a really wide variety of like producers on the show. Yeah. And I think that's like really good because even though they are very kind of pushing this kind of like girly kind of concept, um, they do have like people like Sonny coming in yeah. and making songs for them. But there's a lot of different girl, you know, concepts. Mm -hmm. And this one was, I think, called like the trap girl, the trap pop concept. Yeah, um, it was really weird what they named them, um, but this song for me, I don't, when I hear it, I don't think it, it sounds anything like trap pop, um, from what it, I would think trap pop would sound like. It has like a little bit of, I don't know why they picked trap, because trap is primarily the EDM version of rap, um, but uh, uh, there is an EDM part, like the chorus mm -hmm. is very EDM, kind of like Dum Dum is a little EDM uh, during the chorus. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Yum Yum is my like 
third favorite song. Like, I, I think mm. it's a really good song. Like, I, on any other week, I think I would pick Yum Yum as, like, my, my favorite song. Yeah, it, it would be like second or third favorite song for me out of this group. Mm -hmm. And um, depending on how strong the, the songs are in a week, um, this might have been my favorite song in a podcast. Definitely last episode, episode 88, I would have picked, I would have picked four of these songs over whatever the fuck, fuck I Oh, picked? I picked um, 10 Centimeters. 10 Centimeters, yeah. Um, but I 100% would have picked any of these four songs over 10 Centimeters, yeah. but we kind of pushed them to the after show. Yeah. Um, I, I really like this song, yeah. uh, but again, like, I, part of it is like, do I like it because the, the I'm girl that I like girl. is in this one? Yeah. But I think trying to be objectively, I, I, like, there's a lot of really catchy, memorable parts catchy of elements song. to it. I yeah. Feel like. yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and when I know when I first heard this song or at least snippets of the song in the show, I was like, I don't think I'm going to like this song at all. Like, I really was not mm -hmm. when, uh, yeah. thinking I was going to like it. When they first showed kind of like the clips of the song and like kind of play the vocal guide and, oh, that's the name of it, vocal guide. And yeah. we did not we, totally, we did not totally, we totally look that did up. not look that up we while did. I took a poop break. We did. Totally not. Um, but... When I first heard it, I was like, oh, this song is like, doesn't sound very good. Like, mm -hmm. And when they start practicing singing it, I'm like, oh, this doesn't... Because there's kind of like a part where it goes like low to like really, really high. Yeah. Uh, or and, I was I like, and I was like, hmm, that does not yeah, sound pleasing sound to good. the ears. But yeah. once he kind of, you know, puts his little stank on it and then like, you know, mixes it up, it, it actually sounds really, really good. And he kind of downplays that really, really high note. Mm -hmm. Um and he just adds kind of these really, really catchy parts to it. And like, there's kind of like this vocal like rise that mm -hmm. I really, really like about the song as well. Yeah. And surprisingly, this song like has grown on me a lot since I first listened to it. Yeah, I really, I really, really like this song now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I especially like it's got, so the, the chorus part, the yum yum part especially is my favorite because not only has does it have cool kind of syncopation. Yeah, yum, uh, yeah, yum, yum. It's like, yum, yum, yum. It feels very like kind of like, marching like drums yeah, yeah and i was i was in marching i was in the drum line mm -hmm. and i really like syncopation I, mm -hmm. I think i mentioned that whenever i can yeah uh, but also it's like at a very kind of like i don't know what the correct word is because i ain't you know i ain't no mr jk pop but mm -hmm. like um it's kind of got like a very minor sounding um mm. uh, sound yeah. so it kind of it like it could potentially sound out of place but like it doesn't i think it fits really yeah. well with like the change in syncopation with the minor key yeah like it I don't know if it actually is a minor key, but it is in my head. It, for me, when I hear like the chorus, um, it, re it reminds me very much like it would be like a harmonization of like a more like major kind of pop song. Mm. Um, like if you if they sing it kind of like at a certain like note higher, like and blended it, it would sound really, really full. Mm. Yeah, I think I know what you're, what you're trying to get at. Like, listen to the song if you have, like, no idea what we're talking about. And listen for the chorus and kind of listen to, like, the the note they're singing. It sounds very, very interesting, to say the least. Yeah, and I haven't heard Dum Dum, actually, in a while. But, like, I do really think these songs are pretty they give the same, similar. They give the same feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I like. Like, yeah. I think that's really cool. And so. we really, really love Dum Dum, so. I did, I did. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about the next song, and this song is called In the Same Place.
Ching Chong, Ching Chong Feng. Oh, wait. Wow. That's, a, that's the wrong language. Wow. That's the wrong language. Wow. Um, but now, in this song is uh, produced by uh, B1A4's... Uh, Jin Young. Jin Young. Yeah, he's the leader of B1A4, I think. Yeah. Uh, who produced a lot of B1A4 songs. Mm -hmm. um, he started to do some stuff for Oh My Girl, which is like his label kind of girl group. Sister yeah, group. Sister group. group. Yeah, um, sister group. I think I talked about... Uh, uh, my students' obsession with Oh My Girl just because she liked B1A4 so yeah, much. Yeah. Um, but so this song is the most like cutesy girl girly song. Girly girl song. Girly girl yes. song. Um, it doesn't sound like no. G Friend, but it is more similar to that kind of G Friend I could pure style. I could see G Friend singing this song. I would like to see G Friend sing this song. I would actually. Um, now, this song. Uh, like, there are some days where this is my favorite song. Mm. Um, I really like, I like this song more than the G-Friend songs, I for, think. For me, this is like my third or fourth favorite song. And I actually do like the G-Friend songs better than this song. Yeah. Uh, maybe I haven't listened to it enough for it to really, really grow on me. But... Like, I listen to these songs way too fucking much. Yeah, like, I, I like, don't get me wrong, I really, really, really like the song. But out of the, the other songs, like, I like Yum Yum better than this song. I like... The next two songs that we're going to talk about better this song um for me it's just not upbeat enough if i want to say like anything like if i want a g friend kind of song right i think that's that's weird to me because i think this song is more upbeat the reason i like this song because it's, it's more upbeat, upbeat than um g friend songs hmm that's really interesting uh like, well okay maybe upbeat's not the right word because it i this i think this song builds more and yeah. it's more it's a little bit more clubby I think mm. then the G Friends super pure. Um, I, I think the reason I like this song more also is because G Friends songs are great, but they also remind me of an older time. They mm. remind me of Into the New World. They remind me of that kind of old school style. Um, when I say upbeat, I don't mean in terms of like BPM. I mean mm. in terms of like happiness, oh, cheeriness. Yeah, cheeriness. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, so wrong choice of words. Um, okay. This song that sounds very sense. depressing for me. This song is a little depressing. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, uh, for the okay. So the reason why it's about I fucking think goodbye. Yeah, it's about like you know we're in the same place, but we're gonna say goodbye. Yeah. And for me, like that is like the sadness of this show, mm. like kind of put into a song. And like mm. I don't like it because it makes me feel so sad. Mm. And like okay, I can get um, that. I understand that more now. Yeah. Um, I like that kind of I guess feeling because mm. it you know. I like this song, I think, even aside from that kind of emotional mm -hmm. tie to kind of, you know, the lyrics are supposed to represent. Yeah. Like, Jin Young does say, like, I wrote the lyrics and I wrote thinking this about song you thinking guys. about the hard, you know, mm -hmm. that's his PR take. We're, we're, we're training in the same place. We're in the same place at the same time. Yeah. Like, but we're going to say goodbye. Fine. We're going to have to say goodbye. Yeah. Well, um, I, I just like it because it's... I don't know if this is true. I don't know if I'll believe this in two weeks once the the, <laughs> the hype the days, runs off. Yeah, the hype runs off. But produce one one like super yeah, you're super in. I'm in. Um, but like the G Friend songs just sound like they're copying a style from the past, mm. while I think this song takes that style and modernizes it a little bit. Mm. Um, I, I think I can. I think I can agree with you on that. And I I like songs that I can bob my head to it and yeah. and this song also benefits from re repetition in like it, not only in the chorus because mm -hmm. every song in their mother nowadays just repeats w the same word in their chorus right mm -hmm. um, but this has like repetition in the verse too where mm -hmm. like um again I mentioned before that the, some of the things I hate the most in in k-pop is when the verses are boring but the, the courses are catchy, so everyone's like, man, this is a great song. Yeah. And I'm like, well, when you spend two-thirds of the song waiting for the good part, it's not, it's not, it's not, a, good not song. a great song. No. It, it has catchy parts, but it's not a good song necessarily. Yeah. Um, and for this one, like, I, you know, I was just, just listening it. to it with you, and there's so many times I'm just like, and, you know, and I'm like, hey, yes, I love, I'm, I'm so happy. Um, but the thing I really like about this song, but I also... Which makes, which is super contradictory. But the reason I like this, the sadness of the song is because during the chorus, like they sing the chorus like kind of descending, hmm? like mm -hmm. they have a, a line that's throughout, 
in the chorus, but it's like descending and then descending and then descending mm. and then up again. Mm. And that makes me, f that kind of it's like arrangement. There's a little hope. There's a little hope at that the end. That kind of arrangement makes me feel like really kind of like melancholy and like really sad. Yeah. Like. It is definitely, now that you say that, like you I don't get, play, you I don't, don't get that, sad right? when I listen to it. Yeah. Um, but it's like a bittersweet feeling. It's a bittersweet feeling. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. Yeah. Let's talk about the next one. Yeah, so the next talk, the next song that we're gonna talk about is called Fingertips. Can you feel me? I got you. Got you on my my fingertips. Got you on my my fingertips. Got you on my hips. Got you on my lips. Got you on my on my on my fingertips. Oh. show is called fingertips yeah and rightfully so because uh, this is our favorite this song. is our favorite song this is our favorite song um of this group uh and it definitely would have beat out like almost any song that we've talked about in any podcast so far i mean I, my memory is not good enough to be like every almost. song but almost. this is definitely a top 10 contender type song for yeah, me yeah yeah um like top 10 end of the year song for yeah. me now this song is also produced by someone who works very closely with SM. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, this guy and the Yum Yum guy work together like all the time. Yeah, for like um, Dum Dum View. Yeah, Shiny's um, View. Mm -hmm. I think he's probably on the list for EXO's Let Me Ride. Also, like yeah. these are longtime SM, SM producers. Dude, yeah, uh, Chingu's. Yeah. Both of them. I I don't know if they're from America, but they're definitely not from Korea. Yeah. Um, one one of them. The Yum Yum guy is definitely not from Korea. Yeah, he can't speak Korean at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's. Latino or I don't, I don't know, know what his ethnic background is. I don't is, know what it is. But this guy is definitely Korean. Yes. Uh, but definitely Korean, Korean American. Maybe Korean American, Korean Canadian, we don't know. But his name is like Ryan. His name is <laughs> Ryan Jun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they make fun of it too, because it's like sounds like Lion and whatever. Yeah. Um but anyway, so this song is definitely I think the catchiest song. Oh, easily. It has so many catchy parts throughout. Yes. Um also it also had our favorite people on it so mm. i don't know like i don't know again how much that affected this song mm -hmm. but like when i first heard this song i instantly was like I i'm gonna like this song yeah i was like oh i'm down yeah. i'm down i even played it for you mm -hmm. uh before you even watched those episodes and mm -hmm. you were like i'm down with this um so that's you know pre-bias right I'm he didn't down. know i was diggity down um, yeah like this song for me i can say without any kind of um doubt in my mind that this song i would like regardless of like any k-pop bias mm. this song is produced really well it's sang really well the the rapping is very good yeah. i don't have a single complaint about this song yeah yeah no me, me neither like, if, if you're if you're talking about like a girl group pop song that will just stick in your head like fucking glue this is the song yeah, yeah. And, and it sounds like an sm song like it sounds like a kind of a western-ish song mixed mm. with some k-pop right yeah um it's not full euro euro yeah, euro, uh, SM. euro sm yeah um it's like kind of like this really good mix like like i don't know like red velvet is a little too quirky and weird they have maybe i feel for like this they have song. too too much edm aspects to their songs yeah and i don't think girls generation could pull off a song mm -hmm. like this but like like 
this is definitely a song that like if either of those groups sang it, like it, it would, would sound be a totally different. Number one song for a very long time, I think. But it would sound totally different. Probably would. Yeah. But well, maybe maybe not totally different. You don't know. But uh, I would. You don't know. Yeah, that's trust true. in your girl. That's true. If if Red Velvet sang this song, it would be like maybe my favorite Red Velvet song. And if Girls Generation sang it, no, it wouldn't be my. It wouldn't be my Girls Generation. But it'd be a pretty, it's pretty damn good one. It's been so a long good. time. Um, it's been a, it's been a really long time since I've had like this kind of song that I can really back. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. where it's like it has every element of like pop music that I really really like in it. Yeah. And they have like. Not on us, they have like haze, they have ooze. Right? But not in the brave sound way, in a kind of similar ish way, but it doesn't yeah. sound brave sound. Yeah. And you can tell like the SM guys kind of collaborated on this because this does also kind of have a little bit of a drum liney feel yep. in like the breakdown. And this song, so performance wise or music wise, do you think is better? I mean, definitely the music. Mm. I think the performance. Um, well, we, actually, we didn't talk about one of the things I really hate. Uh, I, the one single thing that I hated the most about the show was the camera work mm. on, um, on the, the, live the live performances. Because, uh, like, there, we mentioned how it, they spent episodes building to these epic challenge moments. And, like, the cameras that they use either encounters some... Like, I'm very sensitive to, like frames per second. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's just because I play a lot of video games in my life, but like there is a very noticeable drop in Quality. FPS yeah. during a lot of the um, uh, live performances. Mm -hmm. And so uh, like I really wish there was just kind of a full backed, you know, backed up mm -hmm. version of this song, not just face, face shot, face shot, face shot, face shot, switching every five seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can't really judge the entire performance because I don't, you don't ever see the entire performance. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like the performance a lot too. Yeah. Um, I'm, so I'm kind of with you on this. I do like the, the, the audio version mm -hmm. a lot better. Well, not a lot better, but I do like it better than the performance version. Uh, the performance version, I feel like there are some tweaks to the choreography that I feel would be better. That would suit like the theme or like the kind of flavor or, or kind of the lyrics of the song better. Uh -huh. And... Uh, definitely, I, I do want to say, like, the camera work was really, really, really shoddy during some of these performances, and it was... Yeah, 24 hours gets the worst. Gets the worst, worst but, end of that stick. But Fingertips is also pretty bad, yeah. in my mind. Um, but but you have to keep in mind that... Uh, the reason I don't judge the choreography that much is because... It's hard to see. Obstensively, you know, according to the show, like, the, the girls themselves made the choreography mm -hmm. in a week, right? Yeah. Like, the, it's not a professional choreography team. They only yeah. had a week... To practice, maybe even less, because they're they may or may not be practicing multiple things and mm -hmm. and and going out to do uh, pick me shows right mm -hmm. in random places. So like, um, it's not it's not pros doing it. So I, mm -hmm. I don't judge it. Uh, I'm As not harshly. really care that much. Yeah. I guess I should say I think they did a, a great job, yeah. and um, I think most of the girls do a great job at at whoever's coming up with this choreography mm -hmm. with the help of I think the the, the trainers, the trainers at, at on the show, but like. Um, yeah, that's why I don't judge it. But the song, for sure, 100%, I think I can say this, like it's, this will be on one of our top 10s. Oh yeah, I think so. Yes. It, I think it would probably be like lower on one of our top 10s because like we're going to listen to it so much throughout Maybe. the course of the year. That's, that's my prediction. And so like Steven was saying, like all these songs, like the choreographies, they don't don't get me wrong. They are very 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 good for trainees. No. Like it it blows my mind that they that trainees can come up with these choreography points. And now come up with them and learn and, and execute, execute them, them in, yeah. in a week. Like I am saying, like I'm not saying that I don't like the choreography. I'm saying that the choreography. I feel like there could be yeah. some little bit little bit of tweaks to make it even better. Like we were hoping, we were actually really hoping that once the final group formed, that they would like re-release some of these tracks oh, with these I set would be 11. so happy. I would be so happy. So far, uh, it's not true. It's not yeah, happening. But I'd be so happy if that was the case. But yeah, and like go on shows and perform fingertips. Mm -hmm. Like I would love that, Woo! but uh, they're not gonna do that. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So the last song is the. Um, this is the song that they. It's like the pre-debut quote-unquote song for their group. Uh, this was the 
the song that they used for the last performance and also their first release as a, a group. Yeah. So you, um, you could say it's their debut song. Yeah. But it's like, it didn't get a real music video. They're not promoting mm -hmm. on any shows. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, K-pop, in K-pop lingo, it's a pre-debut, right? Yeah. Um, but the song is called Crush. All right. <laughs> uh-huh. Come on, girls. Uh-huh. Not to be confused, of course, with the artist crush. Who I like. Who you like. I, 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 so so I'm so fine with him. So so, yeah. You know, we, 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 we ain't friends, but we acquaintances, you know. Like, if I see him in a club, I'd be like, what up, crush? And he'd be like, who are you? And he'd be like, who are you? And I'd be like, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, never mind. Hey, no matter. Hey, no matter. Um, so this song, uh, I think this is the song that me and Josh feel the most different about. Yeah, and I'm kind of like halfway on it because I feel the performance and the audio are so different. So depending on which one you're talking about, I feel like they're a totally different song. Right, so the first time we ever hear this song on the show is the final live performance in the last episode. Yep. And I don't, and that was an actual live show, like broadcasted yeah. live. Um, uh, and it was not good. It was not good. Um, we, we can both agree that the performance version of this, not very good. And, and it wasn't like they just didn't dance well or they didn't sing well at the time. It was just like... Everything kind of comes together in this really not like great package. Perfect bad storm. Yeah, like the audio quality is not good mm -hmm. because there's mul there's a lot of girls singing this song at mm -hmm. the same time, and or, or they kind of trade off and it, just the overall quality of the performances of that last show is just not great. It's the, not up to par the expectations that we had looking at the other performances from the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know you can definitely tell. Even in the show, you can definitely tell that they didn't really have that much time to prepare, mm -hmm. I feel like, for this one. Um, and I think that kind of shows a lot. So I was really down on this song. Mm -hmm. Even when they were showing snippets of it as they were practicing, I was like, this song does not sound good at all. Yeah. Like, I even messaged him. I was like, it's some tra it's, it's trash, and I feel bad because this is supposed to be the best song, but they already used the fingertips. Yeah. Make them do fingertips again. Yeah. So me and Steven kind of have this theory that um, since the last show uh the finale is like quote unquote live that they don't have more than one take to do it so maybe yeah. that's the reason why it's not up to quality as t the other performances because mm. um in a lot of the like, k-pop like shows like you know m countdown and inking io and you know music bank places like that a lot of people don't know but they have multiple takes of the song um so that's why like a lot of the bigger groups will have like a more clean looking performance because they have more time to kind of and they'll have outfit changes have more takes. And, you yeah know. Have, have more takes where uh, so if you're doing it live you don't have more than one take so maybe there is sort of a bias in the other performances that they did do it more than once and they kind of 
you know. Yeah, and then there's the inherent the problem of it's a live performance, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of live googly moogly that you got to deal and with and, when it's and a, the crowd is the hugest is the largest up to that point yeah, yeah. so they, there's also you know nerves and there's also like well this is the final one yeah right? they so. probably slept like two hours in the last like seven weeks you know like mm -hmm. um but all that said and done they released they call it a music video but i think it's disingenuous to call it a music it's video very disingenuous. um it's really just like a fun practice not even it's not even a practice video they're not even trying half of the time they're not even trying to dance no it's just like um one of those it's like a behind the scenes video yeah kind of um, like making of yeah it's kind of like a you see them kind of doing the recording thing and you see them like in a small ass room kind of like half ass dancing yeah because apparently uh, i was reading like that was filmed the very next day like the very next yeah. day of of the announcing the final group um and so that was them really kind of learning which parts they were actually going to sing yeah. and like, you know, they all did learn the choreography for the big finale, but there are some specifics in that big finale that kind of messed that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think a lot of people f were like, didn't watch uh, Produce 101. Yeah. And this was that they, they've been hearing about this group, they've been hearing about this group. And so they check out this quote unquote music video and, and they're, they're like, like, what the hell is what this? What the fuck is this? So like, it looks like it would cost eight dollars to shoot yeah. which it does it looks like it costs eight they like spent an five dollars on kimbap you know like. yeah yeah <laughs> um those girls probably didn't eat for like seven years yeah. right but like it looks really shitty um they don't even dance as a group mm -hmm. maybe they dance as a group for like 10 seconds like, and i'm just fun they're not even really trying because yeah. it's just for fun um so it's it's actually kind of a really bad first impression it really and is. i and I mean, Mnet is Mnet, and they're known for being really bad at certain things, and mm -hmm. this is definitely something they're bad at. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I listened to the song like 17 times in the last two days, and every time I hear this song, I like it more. You're done with that sickness. Like, yeah. like uh, they definitely, because, uh, you know, when we hear the live performances until now, like, they rearrange some of the parts because yeah. there are less girls singing it, right? These are the final 11. Um, and I think some of the girls fit much better. I think uh, the producer of this, who also produced Fingertips, mm -hmm. um, his final mix of the song is much, much better. Yeah. Um, and when you're not hearing it in this live kind of situation, um, I think it sounds much better. Um, but I can totally understand why someone who never watched Produce, this was their first experience with Produce, would be like, would what be the like, fuck is this? Eh. Yeah. Um, I still think the song is better than a lot of songs that I've heard hands down from a new mm. girl group anyways. Mm. Um, I, it's, this is not like the blow you away song, mm. but there are so many things that I've, I'm growing to really like about this song. Like, yeah. I think there's this rap part in the middle that like, like kind of catches you off guard. It kind of catches me off guard, but not in a Frankenstein way. Mm -hmm. And like, again, there's this like syncopation part to some of that rap that I'm just like, Fuck yes, this you 100% know an American produced this part mm -hmm. because this is not something a Korean person would ever put in their song. It's, um, it's definitely not Korean style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of with you for most of the parts. It really depends on which one you're talking about because this song for me is like the biggest difference between performance and audio version. Now, if you're talking about the performance, this would be like maybe bottom of the barrel for me. It like, was, de I think it was the worst or maybe second worst performance of the entire series. Like, yeah. It is really not a good performance. It's, it's really, really bad. Now for the audio version out of all the songs, this would probably be maybe third or fourth best song for me. So kind of like middle of the road, a little bit higher. Um, I do feel like this could be a mushroom song for me the more I listen to it. I have listened to a lot of the other songs more than this song. But I kind of do get behind a lot of things you're saying, especially in the rap part. Mm. Like the rap part, there are some very catchy kind of, like not really sing rapping, but the way they form the words and the way they kind of do the diction, where I think it's very, very catchy. Mm. Now, um, like I said earlier, just because you have catchy parts in a song doesn't necessarily make it a good song. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of coming around and finding more catchy parts to it. But I'm not... You're like, not sold yet. I'm not sold yet, like Steven yeah. is. So, I'm sold, man. I'm like, yeah. like this song did start out like number four, but like every day it kind of moves up a peg, right? Like yeah. I think right now it, it's number two, 
behind fingertips. Uh, fingertips, of course, number one. It's always been number one. Um, it's so good. I mean, I, but I, I really do like In the Same Place. Mm -hmm. I really do like Yum Yum. Like, these are still, we're, we're talking about like, this is like fighting over the end of the year podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, these are all great songs, but we're trying to order them. Like, yeah. like, again, uh, it, this is 100%. I'm, this is why I hate going deep because I cannot tell if it's because of bias or not. But like these four songs, Yum Yum, In the Same Place, Fingertips Crush, like, like, I, I personally wouldn't be surprised if at least three of them are on my top 10. Like I, I, they're really good. Like we've had some really great songs this year, yeah. right? But like they've been really great In a production way. songs, yeah. but they're not great catchy songs. Yeah. So if that makes any sense. I know. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Like the songs that have been that we've been talking about on our podcast up until this point. Like I feel like there could be a wide array of singers that sing them, mm -hmm. and they would still be good songs. Um, but these songs, I feel like they kind of have a flair either in the tone of voice or like the type of um, way they sing it. Mm -hmm. That's just really, really, really catchy for me. Yeah. Or again, that could just be because it's tied emotionally to the to the show yeah. for us. But you know, like like for example, Mama Moo makes a gr great songs. I, mm -hmm. I we've been loving Mama Moo stuff. Oh yeah. But like Mama Moo songs for me at least, they're they're just not catchy songs. They're, they're great songs. Yeah. Amazing they, songs. They, they are kind songs. of like very cult classics. Like anybody who listens to that song would be like, oh man, they are very good singers. But their type of music doesn't fit everybody's palate. But these songs are like pop bangers. You yeah. Know? And the, not the sad thing, but like um, the songs did are do fairly well. Like some most four of the four that we've talked about or... Yeah, Yum Yum, In the Same Place, Fingertips Crush, like, they're on, or they have been between, like, 10 and 25 Five, for, yeah. for quite a while. Um, Crush actually is not doing very well. It's yeah. going down pretty fast. Um, In the Same Place is, is the highest ranking yeah. one. I think it goes Fingertips, then Yum Yum, and then Crush. Um, sorry, Pick Me is in there, of course. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think the one unfortunate thing that Produce ran into is that... Um, uh, the drama Descendants of the Sun came out mm -hmm. in Korea around the same time. And it's just, um, the OST songs are just shitting on everything else. Yeah, this is a, it, you know, it happens once every other year, I think. But yeah. there's a, uh, in Korea drama. they call it a national drama, which is yeah. like a drama that reaches more than like 40% of viewership. Korea yeah. viewership, which is an insane amount. Um, but everyone and their mom is watching Descendants of the Descendants Sun. Of the Sun. And so, like, the top 10 spots, like, seven of them are OST songs from yeah. that. Um, and they've been OST songs for a very long time. Yeah. So I think if Descendants of the Sun didn't come out, these would definitely... All of these Be songs higher. would have moved up Probably to top, top 10, 10. Yeah. at least for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, unfortunately, um, they got... They got kind of... Juicy. You kind of just, you know, swept under the rug a little bit. Yeah. Um... Which, I, which I've seen the first two episodes because I did a K-Laws about it on the Drama Fever channel. And if mm -hmm. you didn't know I did funny, stupid uh, K-Drama videos, I do do them. And I always forget to mention them on our <laughs> do podcast. Do. I do do them. Um, they're do called K-Laws. You should check them out if you like K-Dramas. Yeah. Um, all right. So we talked about the songs. We tried not to be super spoily. Um, but now. But now the full-on... We gonna ruin everything. everything. You should only watch this section if you've seen the show or just don't care. Yeah. Like if you never plan to see it, but you want to hear our yeah. detailed thoughts, I guess you can keep listening. And not, and not just seeing the show. We're talking about finish watching the you show. Let's finish. We're going to talk about the members. Finish. We're going to talk about specific ones we liked or didn't like uh -huh. or specific things we liked or didn't like. Yeah, yep. So we're trying to give the longest warning possible. Maybe, you know, you're in your car. You can't just pause it right now. Right? Maybe you're, you know, you're, you're. You're, you're not standing right next to your phone because yeah. you're ironing. Maybe you're yeah. ironing. Yeah, maybe you're um, ironing, washing the dishes. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're, you're washing pooping the dishes. Maybe and you're playing on a sound Well, system. if you're pooping, you can probably pause it right away. But, you know, we're trying to give you some time. So, again, fair warning. We're going to spoil we're everything. We're going to spoil everything starting right now. Okay, Josh, let's talk about... Ow! Let's talk about Sohei. 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 Which, if you don't know their names, okay, you know Sohei. She's the she's the girl that sang the IU three note 
and failed really bad. She's the no, one. No, no, she's not the one who sang the I Ain't Thing Now. She is. Yeah, she is. No, the musical girl is the, the, the one who sang the I Ain't Thing Now and failed during the audition. It was. I am 99% sure she, it was so here. Yeah. It wasn't her. It was like a huge thing, and they were like, "She's gonna sing the three note. She's gonna sing the three note, and she go and she fucks it up really badly." That's a that's a musical girl. Okay. I'm gonna have to edit. I'm, I'll look it up right now. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this part, but if I'm right, Josh, how much do I bet? Let's go. Uh, I'll put Iman one on it. Twenty thousand. Oh, twenty bucks. Okay, yeah, let's go. Bucks. Shake your hand. You've seen it. I don't know how I'm gonna edit, or if this is even gonna be in it. What do I even Google? You're talking, you're talking, hold on, let's be very clear. You're talking about during the audition. The original the, audition. The first, the first evaluation. Yes. The when one where... When you're sorting them into A, B, C, D, A. Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. So, we looked it up, and I'm a fucking idiot. Easiest 20 bucks ever made. So, we'll move on from that. Dee ding, 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 dee ding. That's the money, money, money song. Like I have no fucking idea what you were just doing. <laughs> it's the money, money, money song. Is that money, money, money? money, money? money. So why didn't you just sing that part? Because you gotta lead up with the dance. You mean the lead up to that? The lead up and the humming that the audio listeners may or may not be able to see. Money, 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 money. You're you're a great audio. Po- you're a great audio podcaster. Sometimes, Josh. I know. I really am. Especially when you. Uh, Mention sing things and that hum I'm and mention things that nobody can see. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, before that random interruption, yep. I did want to talk about Sohye because mm-hmm. she is like the big dividing point in this thing. Yeah, so um, Stephen and I, uh, when we were watching the show, we messaged each other constantly about it. And Stephen was like maybe one or two episodes ahead of uh, I was, and then a point he was just like rocketed ahead. Yes. Um, and he got to see the final episode before I did because he stayed up uh, and waited for the, the subs. And we kind of said, okay, which girls do you want to see in the group? Um, if you don't have 11, just name the ones you definitely want in the group. And Kim Sohye was the divider basically between. Yeah, we were, we were we pretty close um, mm-hmm. with I want to say maybe wanted. eight girls overlapped. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, overall, like, Every girl that I wanted to get in made made the list, so I was really Me too. happy. Me too, yeah. Um, but see, the opposite, of course, is I, no girl I didn't want made it in. I'm like, yeah, you. I didn't want her to um, come in. But let's get it. So there may there may be one crazy fucking person who didn't watch the show and is in the spoilers. They don't know who Sohye is. So quick primer: Sohye is somebody who she's the underdog. She's the underdog, but usually underdog infers that she or he, or the team, right, mm-hmm. has this, has the skills to do it. They just weren't given the chance, chance. to do it, right? That is not the case with Sohya. Her skills and singing are 100% subpar. Are lacking. They are not good, okay? They are not debut quality. But she got a lot of votes because um, they saw her work very hard. Yeah. Um, so she went from, like, you know... One of the worst contestants yeah. to one of the average contestants. But seeing that big jump for a lot of people and then the way Mnet kind of cut the, the, the episodes, um, a lot of people really liked her and really... She, like, represents that, like, it doesn't... You don't have to be the prettiest girl. You don't have to be the most talented girl. Like, if you out there, any one of you can be a K-pop star... Or ever had a dream of being a K-pop star? You support you her. You can do. You can be Kim. Is it Kim? I don't actually yeah, Kim remember. Yeah, Kim Sohan. Yeah, Kim Sohan. Like you can be her. So I think there was a lot of like wish fulfillment into her voting, and some people uh, really don't like that, and they find I don't it like that. bullshit and uh, uh, dumb. I wouldn't call it bullshit, right? Because for me, I understand that this is a popularity vote, and I cannot deny that she's very popular. But if there was an actual judge, as we alluded to earlier, she should have been she cut. Would, the first she round. would have been cut. She should have been cut the first round. Um, and I find I, I'm actually on the opposite side. Like, if this was a real girl group and this was a girl group that'd be that'd be around for 12 years, cut that bitch. Okay, mm-hmm. cut her out. Um, but this is not that. Right. Mm-hmm. This is like like a temporary group, and you. She was very popular. 
totally makes sense to include her in a group. And I, I hope I like her. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, barring some outside information that may or may not be true, um, <laughs> she may or may not have been an Ilgen, aka a bully. Yeah. Um, but or like troublemaker. from what the show has portrayed, which I know is could be false, right? Yeah. We don't know. Um, like. I really like that character. Mm -hmm. Like she, she fully acknowledged. Like she is a person with no self confidence, which I yeah. Humble, Josh does humble, it. humble to a fault. Yeah, like I relate to that a lot, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you don't, right? Yeah. Um, big, uh, I see a lot of myself in in, in her, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 you know, I really like that, right? Yeah. I was like, damn, like th for real, like sh the. But I understand why people don't like her, yeah. right? Because every girl worked their ass off, right? Yeah. Even if you were the best, you worked your ass off. If you were one yeah. of the worst, you worked your ass off. Yeah. How come this girl gets the votes? Like, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but. see, for me, like, it's hard for me to, to divorce those two trains of thought. Like, if I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this is a popularity contest. The group's only going to be together for one year. It's kind of like a moment momentum building time for them, right? And I think of it like that, then sure. I don't really care if she's in or not. But if I'm thinking of like, okay... You, you're trying to like make a group who, who are good singers, who have appeal, who are good dancers, right? And I think she only fits one of those three criteria. But but yes, but I don't think that was the goal of this show at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. That's they, what I'm they saying. Were like, trying if, to find... if, if I was thinking like you're trying to find... But, but the right. thing is, but, but that's... Right, but you're saying I don't like it because of this other reason. Like, yeah. you know... So let me finish. So with that kind of train of thought, like... I really think that she benefited the most benefited the most from the way they cut the show, from the way they produced the show. They're trying to find an underdog to kind of push up and she was the person to do it. And that's why I I don't like her being in the top 11 because her being in the top 11 is kind of making it seem like the other girls didn't work as hard, which I think there are more talented girls who worked just as hard who should be in that spot. See, I, I don't agree with that because I, I don't think the way they edited it ever made it seem like the other girls didn't work as hard. Mm. Um, okay. I, I I think they they because they edited it in a way where she, every time every time she's working, somebody else is helping her. Right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's never like and sometimes it, sometimes it's like her standing alone trying to practice. But for mm -hmm. the most part, when she's practicing, everybody else is practicing. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think they framed it in a way that was like no one she else deserved is. more she deserved it more because she practiced yeah. harder I, yeah. I don't think it's like that i so the way that they spotlighted her makes it seem like she was an exceptionally hard worker right where i mean i yeah I yeah because because everybody else is like working in the in the in the back in the you know the background and etc but she is the main focus of that and i think like as much as i love uh, the second place person, Kim Sejong, as much as I love her, she got a lot of her popularity because she was helping her earlier on. Yeah, and so did um, so did somebody else help yeah. her for the second round. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like, I, the only, like, the only, I think, legit complaint is that um, she got that spotlight because Mnet chose to cut her in mm -hmm. in that specific spotlight. Mm -hmm. But... I, I don't agree that, like, they made it seem like she was working harder. I, okay. I think that the only unfairness really comes from the way they cut it. Mm -hmm. Because there are probably three other girls that... Could have been spotlighted Could have been the spotlighted, way. right? Yeah. Like, the other three were the Neville Longbottoms, right? Yeah, that, but she was Harry Potter, yeah, right? Yeah, that, that, was, that was my main qualm with her being accepted into the Eleven. And, like, it's not necessarily Emnet's fault. It's not necessarily anyone's fault because... You know, people are digesting the show the way they digest it, mm -hmm. and they vote for who they want based off of what they see. And so, you know, naturally she gets the votes. And that's mm -hmm. that's fine with me because it's like, okay, it's a popularity contest, right? If you're going to have a popularity contest, then the most popular people will get into the group. That, yeah, but see, that you're, like, you're doing this thing where you're like, I don't like it, and then five seconds later you're like, it's fine with me. Like, either yeah. you're fine with it or you're not fine with it. I... I like, I know you're not fine with it, but you keep saying I'm fine with it. Just because I have, like, two trains of thought, right? Because this show, for me, the way I watched it was, like, okay, the most talented, you know, the best singers, the best dancers, mm -hmm. like, should be forming this group. 
and Kim Seo Hye mm-hmm. amongst the like last twenty two participants was neither. A she was better sir. than that. The a other lot, Sohi. Uh, yeah, the other, there, the Sohi a lot. There, she was better. She was actually. She actually. Okay. She actually got a lot better from when she initially was in the show. No. But for me to say that she's one of the top contestants when I think about singing and dancing, it's definitely not that. And if I'm like. Enjoying the show that way, which I was, mm-hmm. I'm not okay with her being in the top eleven. Yeah, so that 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 could be like the expectation of w- mm-hmm. what you expected when yeah. you're watching the show, right? Like, That's why I said I can't really I, divorce those two trains of thought, right? It's know. the same train of thought that makes me feel like there should be a twenty or thirty percent judge vote in there. Not not right, because you, you, not because I'm like fuck so hey that's why this should be in there. Like even before sh- the first evaluation, I was like oh Steven, I feel like this show. Because uh, I was messaging him, I was like, oh, I feel like this show should have like a 20 or 30% judge vote just because yeah. uh, I feel like it would make, I don't know, make him feel more legitimate. Like these girls are the best singers or the best dancers, like the best performers. Hmm. Right? I mean, I just, I, like I knew from the beginning that that was just never the goal yeah. of the show, right? Yeah. Like, for, yeah, for me, like I kind of knew that, but the way I was wa- watching it and the way I was enjoying it was probably different than... I mean, I, I get it. Yeah, you people. wanted that, right? You yeah. wanted the final group to be the best mm-hmm. possible group, mm-hmm. like, and I think that's primarily why people didn't like uh, uh, Soya because, yeah. like, even if they liked her or they liked the story, they're just like, mm-hmm. she's not. Um, she's not one of the best singers. She's not one of the best yeah. dancers. Yeah. And you know, I, there's the number, you know, twelfth girl that like could have been in there, yeah. and she see every time she wakes up in the morning and checks the news, she's like. Fuck, you know, so yeah. is is in that group getting yeah. all this publicity, and yeah. I'm back to you know the Being dungeon. Training, yeah. um, but you know, like one of my problems, I guess, with Unpretty Rap Star and mm. Show Me the Money was that mm. they ne- they're with. never they never pick who's the best, right? Mm. Like they pick uh, who has know, the most appeal. Who has the most appeal, right? Wh- and, whether and, it be popularity or appearance. But but I always hated that. I always mm. hated that because like. When, when it's it, called, they made it, they made it seem, seem like, like yeah. show me the money. We're looking for the best rapper. I'm pretty yeah. rap star. We're looking for the best rapper. But like, they're really not, right? They're they're voting via popularity. Right? Yeah, but the, this one they were very clear. They were like, fuck that shit. We ain't looking for the best. You guys, okay? yeah, you guys are the producers. You're choosing. They're yeah, 100 fan want. vote. Yeah, yeah. You want the prettiest girls? You pick the prettiest girls. Yeah. You know, yeah. you want the 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 dumbest girls? Pick the dumbest, right? Yeah. Like, uh, so for me, I, I that's why I think I'm so accepting yeah. of her because I'm like. Plus, I also think it's hilarious that she... I just think it's also hilarious that she's in it, right? It, like, I think it's hilarious in a be- sad, depressing way that the other girls will now have to work harder to make sure she she learns her choreography. Yeah. To make... It's like a to carry her weight. Yeah. Have to carry it's her a little hilarious to have to carry her weight. Yeah. Um, but, but I also think... Um, but I also think she's not as bad per se no. as they no. make her out to be i i think that um, as well because she's never fucked up a live performance yeah um and th- there are many times in the show where they cut in these like issues and problems that like Not aren't really, really even that big no. and usually you know when they start showing these problems there's usually a fuck up in the live performance like mm-hmm. on american idol or on any of those shows usually at least one of them like yunjung when she fucked up that the high, the high note, note. In, uh, Into the New World. Yeah. But, like, in every live performance in the entire show, there's never a single fuck up. Yeah. Um, and so, like... I, I, I agree with you on that. Like, I, I really think while the cut benefited her a lot, I think it also stuck her with this, like... Underdog. She's so she bad. She can't do anything. Yeah, she's she can't do anything tier. on her own. Yeah. Um, like, I, she's obviously not yeah. the best, but, like, I, I think she's not as, yeah. as bad I, as they make her up. Yeah. Be. And that... Knowing that, that's what was makes me, I guess, a little bit more bitter, right? Because it really feels like they've written this story for her. Yeah. And like, yeah, she was called like Mnet's daughter yeah. in Korea for a very long time. Yeah. Like, for me, in my mind, she's not as bad as they portrayed her to be. But she, but that doesn't make her like the best yeah. singer, the best dancer, right? Yeah. And mainly that's the reason why I kind of have an issue with her being in the group because... Um, I, I just don't think she's ready. I'm not saying she's she should just like quit being, you know, trying to be a, a K-pop idol or whatever. But the thing is, she's not right. Yeah. A lot of people are pissed because she's she's she wants she's, to be an actor. She's an act actor trainee. Yeah. Right. Like she was. She's not even a, a K-pop trainee. Yeah. And she's only been training for five months. Yeah. So that it really goes to show like 
she's really not seasoned yeah. enough. Like um, there are some girls have been training for ten years, and all they want to do is be a K-pop star, and yeah. they're better at singing, and they're better at dancing. Yeah, and they didn't get in. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I can, I can understand. The so hate. yeah, with that kind of unfairness, I really don't want her to be yeah. on the top of it. I have I really have nothing against her. I don't think she's like, oh fuck that bitch. But I'm just like I think it's a little bit unfair that she gets in and some other girls do not. I like her. Mm. I, I was rooting for her, and I was so happy that she made it in. Um, I, I really thought at the last minute the fans would kind of turn the opposite way on her mm. and be like, okay, we're going to vote you top three or top four, top four, top four. But on the last one, you don't get like that pity vote. Like a yeah, sympathy vote. You don't yeah. get that pity vote anymore. We're going to go real. Yeah. But like, Because in the last one, they changed it up. You can only vote for one person one day. Yeah. Or one, one person, one device or whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, but still pulled through by a shit ton. I think yeah, she was she's fourth, fourth, right? She's she was fourth. fourth. Yeah. So some me, some we can talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Some me was first. Kim Sejong was second. Uh, Choi Yujung is third. Mm -hmm. Choi was fourth. Uh, fifth, I can't I remember. remember. Maybe it wasn't Mina. It was. Um, Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, else. What I do want to ask though is then, who are your? I know this, but they don't, right? Mm -hmm. You guys out there, who are your favorite three? Favorite, favorite three. three. Favorite three. three. Oh, that's easy. Yes. The, my I favorite. Know my favorite, favorite three were the top three. Uh, Jun So Mi. Uh, she's the half Korean, half Canadian, I guess we'll say. Half half Korean, half Canadian half girl. White. Yeah. Um, Kim Sejong or Queen Sejong. Um, the Queen. The Queen. Or the God. The God, God Sejong. God Sejong. And number three, Choi Jin Jung, who me and Steven affectionately titled uh, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, she she is the epitome of like a K-pop idol. When it's time to perform, she just switches it on. Like she's like a totally different fucking person. Yeah, like yeah. she's, she really reminds me of like a lot of K-pop idols. Like, um, someone who really really comes to mind is like uh, Taeyeon from SNSD. Like supposedly Taeyeon is really really introverted and she really really hates cameras, but you can never tell that from the way she performs, right? And like watching the show, like Choi Yu Jung, like she, very 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 very, very 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 keeps to herself. Yeah. Like one this the kind of like the the trainees kind of are meeting each other and doing everything you can kind of just see her like hugging her knees in the corner mm -hmm. like social anxiety style but after that storyline they never show a, a single video of her ever doing that ever again mm -hmm. like after that she's all friends with everybody again so yeah. i feel like that was also a little bit of a little cherry bit of, picking uh a little story bit of storytelling making. you know um and again if you don't know who we're talking about still she, she you know she's the center of pick me right yeah. She's been she's been behind Somi and But the Sejong funny the thing is, time. because of that reason, I felt like she got shot into that popularity because um, in the beginning, the first center of the Pick Me song, it, it's all like trainee voted. And yeah. everyone voted for her because she was so introverted. She didn't really have an easy time making friends. And everybody was like, oh, you know, we want to welcome or, her. Or maybe she had a shit ton of friends and that was just their edit. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Do you think they all would have picked the introverted girl as the center, just out of the kindness of their hearts? Do you it's think really, they would? I mean, there's a, there's would? a few theories behind that, right? Like, maybe they picked her because they thought she would be the less threatening if they were the center. Yeah. Right? Like, you can't pick Somi yes. as a fucking center in the first one because she's just going to fucking destroy you guys. But I also think they didn't they didn't know at the time how mm -hmm. big of a deal it being was. the center of 101 girls would be. Yeah. But it turns out... Pretty yeah. big damn difference. And even after that, there was there was one girl who was just like, the center's not important. Why does everybody think a center is important? Yeah. And then she gets like shit on during one of the evaluations and like the center they that they yeah. randomly chose, like randomly, like got the most votes. And those were my three that I was like, definitely. So uh, I, I probably should have clarified, but like I there's like two threes. There's like the the final three favorite girls, but they're also like, I also wanted to know like the first three girls you liked. Because uh, my first three was not what ultimately was my final three. Mm. Like, I think the first three girls that I was really aiming, like I really like Mina because mm. she was like the chubby girl, but like mm. she was still kind of cute and she was mm. so nice and sweet. Mm. And, and actually her, she really kind of just didn't do anything in the last half of the show. Mm. And so she slowly kind of fell yeah. out of favor. Still happy she made it because I think she's, insanely cute yeah um but like my the first three girls that i really liked of i mean of course it was queen queen yeah, the, the only person who uh -huh. like when i first watched it who like caught my eye like really really just like 
Oh, I really hope she makes it. Yeah. Like the first person that I ever said that, like, oh, I hope she makes it the last eleven yeah. was Kim Zedong. Yeah. And, and that was everybody because she was first for a very long time. Yeah. Um, like I, I like Somi. I don't like her. I think as much as you do. Yeah. Um, but I do like her a lot. Yeah. Um, but definitely, uh, Yu Jong, Yu Yong, Yu Yu Jong, <laughs> Yu Jong. Names. I'm not good with names. Yeah. Uh, Yu Jong. Miss Hyde, Miss Jekyll, whatever we're yeah, calling Dr. her. Dr. Jekyll, Doc Mrs. Hyde. Yeah, uh, uh, best facial f facial expressions mm -hmm. in a group ever. Like I instantly was like, I want this girl to succeed in everything. Yeah. In the, the first in the, the first person life. for me was Kim Se Jong, and the second was Somi. I don't think I ever, um, well, while watching it before like the last two or three episodes, was I like, oh, I want mm. that girl in besides those two girls. Mm. Yeah, um, my third one. Uh, in the beginning, my third so, one. So, so the first one was Kang Mina, and the second one was Sejong. Yeah, and the third one was um uh, was uh, Nayong. Nayong, that girl's so Buddha. hot. That girl's so hot. Im Nayong, Im Nayong. Yeah, there's two yeah. Nayongs. Um, if it was Ki if it was the other Kim Nayong, that would those would be the three jellyfish girls. But uh, yeah. no, it's not that. Um, Im Nayong, oh, she's so hot. Every time I see her, it makes my head hurt. She's so hot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, those are the three that I originally picked, but in the end, I was like, you know, if I had to pick the three girls that absolutely 100% have to make it, it would, again, be the same three. Same right? three, yeah. And that's what everybody else believed, yeah. because those are the top three. Right? In the last episode, like, me and Steven were like, alright, we know which girls are gonna be in. We, like, listed our top ten, and those ten all got in. But, see, that that's another problem I have with the show in retrospect, which is like... Which is like, when it came down even to the 22 girls, mm. right? I could recognize some of those girls in the 22, but there were still some girls that I didn't know their names. Mm. I didn't really know that much about them. Same. Um, I couldn't even remember which performances they did um, because, like, Mnet knew which... Like, oh, here's the thing. It's like the chicken and the egg, right? Mm. Like, were they popular because they're popular? Or were some of these girls popular because M Mnet thought they would be popular, so they yeah. allocated more screen time? Yeah. yeah. It's like, did Mnet, like, make, make them, them popular? Or did Mnet, like, film them because they were popular? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it's it's like, it's like, right? Like, wh why do I like uh, 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 So Me so much? Or why do I like Sejong so much? Is it because they spent a lot of time with them, yeah. right? Well, or, it's like... Did I originally like them, or did they brainwash me to like them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like how many other girls had interesting things that we just didn't see because Mnet wanted to create, like, they had, you know, it makes sense, again, because yeah. you have a hundred some, you, you can only focus on ten, but it, it just so happens that, like, ten, all ten, ten of them it. are in it, right? You're like, huh, you know? Yeah. So, like, that's what makes me, like, really bittersweet about the show is that, these girls who are like 16, 17, 18 years old, like really young girls, like they are learning that appearance is like really tied to popularity. And not just like, you know, when girls like in America have that same kind of realization, they kind of learn through like their high school or like middle school, right? Like, okay, the popular kids are more attractive, et cetera, et cetera, right? And in Korea, that's the same, right? Yeah, I was going to say uh, that I think Koreans know that since the very yeah. first drama they ever yeah. watched, that being pretty is the most yeah. important thing in the world. Yeah, but they're like, um, they're really just hit with it in the face because their high school is this like nationwide popularity contest, yeah. you know? And like, there is one scene that really, really stuck in my mind where some girl like, who did really, really well on like an evaluation, uh, I can't remember who it was, but she was like, oh, that's... You know, it made me realize like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm, if I mm. sing really well, if I dance really well, like, it, if I'm not pretty, pretty enough, enough, yeah. yeah. And like, know. when she said that, it, like, it left me with such like a bitter taste in my mouth. Just like, damn, really, I wish that wasn't the case, but. But it's totally the case. And, and that like kind of made me more, not angry, but more kind of like, it felt really unfair that Kim Se made it into the top 11. But see, I. That's that's so weird to me because like I I saying what you just said makes even more it makes it makes me think that you would be happy that because they, she's popular because she doesn't because she's well, not, pretty, well, not pretty and she's not perfect oh. and and she is all about heart like mm. she is the heart of the show mm. um, so it's weird to me that you know because all the other girls are super pretty and like 
Uh, I actually think some of those girls that made it that I, you know, that I liked, they, they're not even that good. They're just pretty. Mm. Um, like, I think there were, like, other girls, that were, like the rapper girl. Um, she, I, I think if the rapper girl was pretty, the cube rapper girl, I think if, if she was pretty, she would oh, 100%. He, he or something? Or he in? I don't remember her name exactly. I, I think um, I remember her name, yeah. But, like, even in the show, they talk about comments about how ugly, quote-unquote, uh, mm. netizens thought she was. Like, yeah. if she was pretty, I think she would have 100% been in the top. Oh, the cube line. rapper girl. She's short. Yeah, she's really yeah. short. She's always the, the lead rapper in, in, yeah. in, in all her songs. Um, and I think uh, there is another girl who... She's not a rapper, but she's a singer. You, I, I, She's the girl that sang the Leon song. And I remember oh. you were telling me that she looked like a transvestite. She looks. Um, she looks super mannish. I. I, I but that outfit good. did not do her any. The favors. haircut. Was, yeah. That. That. Yeah. And the haircut too. Yeah. Uh, but like, she was a great leader, mm -hmm. and uh, like everything she did, she did pretty dang good. But like, she just she and she made it all the way well. to twenty two. I think. Yeah. Um. But like, she didn't make it. You know why? Oh, she, she didn't have that not nice pretty. Deal. Yeah. Um. That. That's why. Again. I. That. I'm. I'm support. I'm. I'm on team Sohe because she. She represents. You don't have to be perfect. Okay, you just need heart. You just need heart. Heart need and hard heart. work. Heart and hard work. And mm. a lot of fucking help. But yeah. that represents us, man. That's norms. Mm. Okay, that's normies. Mm. Um, but I, I do understand that you, you don't Am want I normies. Am I normie? You are a normie. <laughs> okay. That's why you should be on Team Sohit. Okay, but, okay. but I get when you're like, yeah, but normies shouldn't be on the non-normie things, right? <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. Like, you don't want fucking don't the, want fucking the LA Lakers to hire a normie, right? No, well, you want well, the best. Well, the Lakers do have a lot of normies right now. Well, but... I've heard that they suck giant they testicles, They suck right giant now. testicle balls. Um, but, uh, all right, so let's then talk about, because we talked a lot about bad things, right? Let's talk about what your favorite, oh, we, we both know what your favorite, our favorite performance. So, Josh, what is, was your favorite performance of the show? Huh, when, I wonder. When they did, so they did covers of songs. They split it up to like dance, rap, and vocal. And you had to kind of choose one song from one group. And one of the dance uh, kind of songs was uh, Bang Bang by Aria Grande, Jesse J, and Nicki Minaj. And that was easily the best performance. Easily. Easily. Everything about it was good. Like, oh my goodness. Like that? Oh my goodness. Like, I know you, there's probably somebody out there that's like, well, any dance group on YouTube could have done better or whatever. But like, in the context of that show, it was leagues beyond any other performance. It blew my mind. Like, yeah. I got like goosebumps watching it because it was so good. I watched it so many times. Like, it was so good. Oh my God. And it made me... It still, to this very moment, makes me angry that they could not get cameras with better frames per second. Because that performance of all, like, I think this performance and 24 Hours mm -hmm. ha suffers the most from the laggy frame rate. Yeah. Um, like, it, it is noticeably, at least for me, noticeably very laggy. It's pretty bad, um, yeah. Especially when you watch the individual cameras. Like, it's, and like, because this song is so kinetic and uh -huh. so it requires, like, it's so smooth looking and, and I want to see it, you know, I just want to see it in all its glory. Yeah, it, it really just blows you away that because they, they made this choreography themselves. Yes. And like when I watched this performance, I was like, wow, these trainees are on another level. Yeah, like I cannot, I can't imagine any, any girl group doing this. Now, um, maybe I don't know what a lot of girl groups are capable of yeah. because they only show they, off what yeah. they show off. they don't off. have the chances as like these girls do, but. Yeah, but I just can't imagine. I'm trying to think of a girl group that like I could even imagine pulling something remotely off like this and like I just can't. Yeah. Um, and like it has that mix. It has, of course, you know, Somi who is westernized and so it fits very well very well for her right but it also has you know miss jekyll in it and like she pulls off the best, best facial expressions, expressions. Oh in my the God. world like, um and she was talking about how like she especially like trained her facial expressions like she's can, yeah. she like studied like cl's facial expressions yeah. and like paused it like millisecond by millisecond to like See how to see like, how she yeah. she could do so many expressions yeah. in, in in such a small amount and, of time. And that is that's a performer right there. Yeah, right? it had the fucking queen of dancing, uh, Chunga, Chunga, and yeah. like amazing, amazing performance. And again, 
Like this would be something that I want to, I would sh send to people because like I, I get a little bit tired of like people assuming K-pop is this one thing. thing. Yeah. And I'm like, but they can do so much more and there's so much more to K-pop than just generic boy bands mm -hmm. and generic girl bands even, right? Like I want to send you, th these are just trainees, right? Mm -hmm. And they did it all by themselves and it's so good. Um, yeah. Like definitely, a lot of people look at K-pop kind of like as this like, oh, you know, they just, they don't stand out. Everyone's just the same. Like they think of them just like kind of as like backup dancers or backup singers. But like this really just shows like the creativity that Korean artists can like come up with. Yeah. 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 Um, it's so also, good. it reminds me just how how good that Bang Bang song is. Yeah, <laughs> like I have so that catchy. song stuck in my head for freaking forever. Yeah. Um, and it's like one of those times where like, you know, as much as I like K-pop, like American pop just... Sometimes it's just so it's just much better. so much better. So much better. Uh, but again, that just could be taste, right? Yeah, it might just be our American ears that like American pop. Actually, w w when this dance came out, like Bang Bang shot up on the charts too in Korea mm -hmm. because people were like, oh, what's this song? Um, but uh, yeah, um, it's also, of course, my favorite one. Mm -hmm. uh, what, do you know what your second... Second favorite one might be mm. like in, in general the overall. Mm. Not off the top of my head. If we start talking about them, I will remember. But like it's such a big jump, I think yeah. in quality. Um, like, I think definitely is number one, and but it would be miles ahead of whatever number two is. Yeah, I I really liked. I mean, I really liked. Um, well, what is the song called? Um, I I really like the in the same place one. In the same place one. Mm. Um, uh, not because, uh, but I think the in the same place performance was a more of, of a, uh, at that specific time, mm. at that specific part of the episode, that specific, the, the looks on their faces and like, like that is, I think one of the reason that Doyon even made it in the top 11, because she was the center that, of that performance. She did that like crying. wistful cry, like, oh my goodness, that made thing. me like tear up. I was like, oh yeah. Huh. That was good for words too. But like I really liked it because it also came off the storyline of like Sohee being really shit uh -huh. and the other girls, Sohee, I think, also being shit. Yeah. They were both shit. And of course they, and they never yeah. fuck and up. The judges the judges like, what you gonna do when you can perform? Yeah. And again, of course, they never fuck up a real one. I don't know whether it's because um you know, they had so many cameras because mm -hmm. they were shooting each individual girl also with a separate camera that mm -hmm. they never had to show any of the bad mm -hmm. things because they could always cut a million times. Um, but as far as we know, they didn't mess anything up. Yeah. So, I um, mean, I, I liked a lot of the performances that had Kim Sejong in it. Like, I really liked uh, Young Love Bridge. Yeah, um, that one was, was very good. emotional. Yeah. I really liked when she did uh, Irony by the Wonder Girls. I do. Uh, also reminds so I remember so they did right all the debut songs of all these groups realize I hadn't even heard some of them as mm -hmm. much as I love K-pop like Kara's debut song I don't know After School's de debut song I don't know I, I didn't know Kara's uh, or After School's there was one more I think that I, I was like I don't know but it also shows how different debut songs are to any of the rest of their career yeah. right like Irony is fucking your, totally your different. Yeah, your debut song is not your yeah. defining La song. La Chata. Yeah. You guys remember La Chata? You remember when FX's songs were like just random that. ass words? Yeah, yeah. Good God, FX. Then you turn to red light and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like, uh, I, I did... I remember actually hearing Irony for the very first time. Because uh, I was in a J-pop at the time, mm -hmm. and I heard Irony, and I was like, I don't like this at all. <laughs> I don't like what this. What is no. this? What is this crap? And then, like three months later, I like Irony. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh man. No, I, I heard, of course, uh, tell me, tell right? Me, yeah. And and then I was like, damn, these Wonder Girls are awesome. What was their first song? Irony. Irony. I remember hearing this, and I thought it was a bag of shit. And then I listened to it more, and I was like, oh, okay, still, it's, it's actually kind of a very interesting song. It's very different. Yeah. Uh, their uh, whole discography. Yeah. And very different than any, I don't think any other groups ever sang a song quite like Irony. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, enough of that tangent. Um, then let's, then is there anything else in general that you really liked about this show that's more spoilery? Um, um, so I, um, cause I, I think usually spoilers is more of like bad things to say, but yeah, I, um, I did like in the, in the end 
or just like any evaluation, they always went with like not the not the cutoff point, but the one like before oh, that, and then they genius. had the greatest reveal. That was so that is so good, right? It's, it, but it's so shitty for the girls. Yeah, it's but that it's makes so the, but that's so what makes shitty. it so good. That's what makes it so good. Like oh my god, yeah. Because it like leaves you with hope until the very end, right? Yeah. Even though you don't want hope, it leaves you hope and like your just... girl can be. Yeah, yeah. It, it was genius though. Yeah. And then I, I liked how they like for the first evaluation they tried this weird like MC thing mm -hmm. with like the Kara girl, some girl I don't even know where she, where she was from, and some dude uh, Beast was he from Beast or B to B or some B group. He he was um he was, was he a uh, Park Young. Oh, from uh, yeah. uh, from Block B, right? Yeah, Block B. Another B group. Um, so they like tried this out, and then like they totally just gave up on that because yeah, like it was good. like not good and so weird. Um, I I'm trying to think any other great spoilery things, like great moments, right? Um, like I thought it was kind of unfair, like during the first evaluation where they were picking the debut songs, like it was ba they like. It was let's a let's try to make race. it fun. Let's have just like yeah. a running and grabbing and putting it in thing. I was like, um, what? Yeah, that was on my list of bad things, but I was trying to think of a good thing first. Oh, sorry. Um, a good spoiler thing. This is just a, a good moment. Like, what are your favorite mm. moments of the show, right? Like, one of my favorite moments was Bang Bang, right? Mm -hmm. One of my favorite moments was, um, you know, it's very sad, but like one of my favorite moments that hundred day letter thing mm -hmm. because like I did not remember that they wrote that, mm -hmm. and even though I watched it all in three days, right? Yeah. Like, well, I guess the, it should be fresh in your memory, yeah, right? At least a week between, right? But I was like, I I did not remember they do that, and then I was like, holy shit, this I really, is so sad. I remember they had to like keep a journal. Yeah, yeah, and I did. I was like, is this the journal thing? Because I remember that was one of the rules. Like, oh. One of the things that made that made me like not tear up, like made me legitimately cry, like tears down my face, is that they didn't have access to their cell phones. They're not allowed mm. to use their cell phones. Mm. And when they first get their cell phones back and they call their parents or they call their brother or their sisters yeah. or whatever, that made me fucking cry. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I made me cry. I, it also made me hurt inside. Mm -hmm. it, it hurt, hurt a little bit. It hurt, it hurt a little yeah. bit. Some someone something was coming out, but yeah. you know, not much. I'm trying to think like that. That's another problem is I watched it so fast that like, yeah. it all bleeds together. Yeah. And unless it's a performance, I, I'm not really I can't remember yeah. it really clearly. And there was um, a, there was another time where like some I think it was might have been Cheng Long that she or Doyan it was one of those two that they were like doing this dance or whatever, and then the the judge or the trainer who was helping them was like. Oh, you did a good job. Mm. And she was like, she just burst out crying. She was like, that's the first time anybody has given me any praise. Mm. And I think she's been a trainee for like years. Mm. And it's like, holy shit. Like, it made me just realize like, man, yeah, being a trainee hard. is not easy, man. Like, that's the first time someone said like something nice about you. Like, God. You know, that does remind me of, it's not a great moment, but it's one of my favorite moments, which is on the very end, last episode, mm. in the live show, the... The CEOs, I guess, of the companies <laughs> are at the show, right? Yeah. And they could not give less of a fuck. They look like they hated every second of that show. They hated that they needed to be there. They hate... They... I, it didn't even look like they even knew the girls on the stage. Yeah. They were just forced by someone to, to sit at their show for three hours. Contractually obligated. Yeah. And so every time they cut to one of the... Well, not every time, but 90% of the time they cut... 99% of the time. Yeah, one to time. one of the CEOs, they looked like they were in like math class. They were like, I hate this. I'm bored. I'm checking my phone. Uh, I really don't want to be here right now, and it was hilarious. I laughed so like, I, much. I can understand because like tra the, like the trainees and like K-pop idols, they're used to just sitting around and just being like Johnny on the spot with the reactions. Like, okay, we're gonna start up and start filming again, and they're like, yeah. But these CEOs are not trained to do that. And the last the last show is like two, three, yeah. four hours, and, and it was late at it. night. Yeah. But still, like these are like this is your company. Yeah. Your it. You know, I don't mean offense to say this, but it's your money. Yeah. These people represent your money, These your are, time, and your effort. Yeah, this, this, 
these are your products. These are yeah. your trainees. Right? Yeah, like you should be happy at least. Make a smile that one of these were chosen to be part of this yeah. group. Like seriously, like they would be like, oh, thank you, CEO. And then it would cut to CEO like, yeah, I, I couldn't give a fuck if you got in this group or not. Yeah, like what's your fucking name? I don't even know. Yeah, and I was like, hmm. Yeah, well, it, I, I found it hilarious. I found it hilarious, but also at the same time, it was, it was a stark reality of just like, man, CEOs just want money. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, there have been a lot of kind of rumors and stuff about how a lot of companies are having a really hard time, like, agreeing on what uh, the direction or, or how per, how the final group is even going to... There was even a time where a rumor was like, they just won't even be able to release a song because yeah. none of the companies can, can agree, agree on which song to pick. Um, and I think I just read today that they're quote-unquote letting the girls pick. Like, they're going to... Show them, I guess, 40, version, 40 different songs and they get a pick. 40 different songs, my God. Yeah, so I don't know how true that is, but, you know, rumors be rumors. Yeah. Um, I thought that was hilarious. And there was a lot of, like, you know, since I like Sohye, like, I, there were so many moments of, like, Queen Sejong, like, helping her out and, like, seeing her thing. And then, like, the teachers, like... Like shitting on her one time, and then they see all the hard work she put in, and, and they like burst like, out in tears. Oh my god! It, it's just so... like it is. I I really love like the judges that and trainers that they picked for this because they are like I feel like they are all different. They all have like a different style and the way they teach. Like they're all hard on them. On they're the, all Asian. Like they're all hard on the trainees. Yeah. But like each one of them has a certain personality. Like. Um, there was actually one of the judges that they just like never showed mm -hmm. and like I remember seeing her at the very end I'm like who is this mm -hmm. like it's almost always that yeah, vocal coach right yeah one of the vocal mm -hmm. coaches yeah like it's almost always a uh, Kahi or Jaya uh, yeah or yeah. Cheetah yeah but then this other girl like she shows up sometimes but like she's really rarely ever like on camera mm -hmm. and like I even forgot she was there man. yeah and I was like who are you like especially like Kai, I, I really, it's really interesting to see because she used to be like the leader of after school yeah. and she's like just really harsh sometimes. Yeah. But then after she's really harsh, she's like, oh, don't cry. Like, yeah. you know, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. Right. Yeah. Like she's very like humanistic. Right. And even that one like choreography, like well, I can't remember her name. Uh, she, but she made like the Kara's Mr. Yeah. Mystery choreography and like a bunch of other choreographies, a really famous choreographer. And she's just like really, really mean. But yeah. then somebody was said something like, you know, oh, this is our last time. And she just like really burst into tears. Yeah. Like yeah. she had kind of like the hard image for yeah. the whole time. But then yeah. every any time that they had her like talk to the girls, like she just, just talked to talk to girls about anything emotional, she just like would cry. Yeah. And it was, it was sweet, right? Yeah, it's really it's very sweet. sweet. It's very um, heartwarming. But then then quickly then let's talk about the worst things about the show. And, and for me, you know, aside from all the camera stuff that I mentioned before, I think the worst thing is um, uh, the way they set up their challenges. Um, like I we agree. mentioned earlier, like I agree. Like some of the ideas of the challenges are so good. Yeah. Like I thought the the uh, the very first one, the pick me challenge, is the best because mm -hmm. everyone is on even playing field. There is no advantage in that mm -hmm. in that thing. Then the second one, it was like uh, running. Yeah. Like, and then it was running, and then like, s then ever since that, like, if you're like a rapper, right? You're fucked. You're fucked because yeah. you, you're in the singing one, or yeah. you're a singer and you got stuck with the rapping part for yeah. one of the later challenges. Like, like once they started organizing by ranking, that's when things start getting fucked up. Things get yeah. even more unfair, and I thought there were many ways they could have. Yeah, I was done very, those challenges better. I was very upset like that the whoever was like ranked higher got priority in like choosing songs or concepts. It's because like whoever's like highest or whatever, like you'll, you'll they're gonna high. you'll still be high, but then you also get the benefit. It's like yeah. it's not really fair. Like But again, right that's the thing, like like I think they should get an advantage. Mm -hmm. Because you're first, you earn first, quote unquote, right? Yeah. Um, you should get some kind of advantage, you know, um, but it shouldn't be as drastic, drastic as, as they kind of made it out to be. Like, for I, like I like the, the, the for their like pre-debut song Crush, like they kind of had like, you know, 
center main vocal main rapper and then like all those tiers and like if you had higher rank than someone then you could kick them out of that tier i, I, thought, I didn't like that either okay like, like, I, I thought that was like out of all the things besides the first like pick me evaluation um, i thought that was like the most fair out of all of them really that's like the least fair because at least if it's running you have a ch it's anyone's <laughs> game right like yeah. this one is very specifically like if you go first, you are going to be stuck with a rando thing. Mm. And, and and that's what happened. Some girl just got stuck with some rando part. They're like... Like sub-vocal number six. Yeah. yeah. Or they they got stuck with rapping and they're not even yeah. a rapper. Yeah. Like, um, And especially because like they rushed... Because they had to learn like the third challenge and the fourth challenge at mm -hmm. the same time, right? Oh, yeah. And so they like really rushed that fourth challenge and like some of them didn't even know which part was which mm -hmm. and they, were, they had to put it on the board like... Like, I actually think they fucked up majorly by making Crush the final performance. I think so, like, also, yeah. I think they should have had a two to three minute solo mm -hmm. for all 22 members. I think so, I too. think that would have been the best yeah, I, ending I challenge. think the last evaluation should have been an individual challenge. Yeah. Similar to how they were, like, you know, kind of graded in A, B, C, D, E, F. Like, they should have had, like... Um, you know, like all of them could be the center, like all of them practice to be the center yeah. or something of like crush. And then like, they're all learning the same thing, mm. right? And then you judge them based off of like that, right? I think I, ideally that would be good, but I think that would be really ba bad television. To, it would be bad television, but it's like- Replay the same song yeah, 23 right, times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but like, like, I think the fairest thing for is like, you choose whatever song you want, mm -hmm. you can sing it, you can, Dance to it. You can do both. You can do whatever the fuck you want. So pretty much but, like the first evaluation. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Except it, it individually and not, mm -hmm. um, not as a group. Or team, yeah. Um, or if you need to pair them in in groups of two or, mm -hmm. or three or whatever. But like, I think picking Crush and then making them do a specific sub vocal like mm. was bad, and the performance was ended up bad. Like yeah. it, it didn't even have any kind of like woof or boom to it. Mm. So like, it was just a really strange yeah. performance for I you. really don't like the way they did like advantages and the way they kind of did like who would receive bonus votes. Those are my main yeah. qualms. Yeah, we, we talked about how like the way they did bonus votes was really strange. Mm -hmm. In every single challenge they seemed to try and rectify a problem in the last one but then mm -hmm. like it would cause another problem. Yeah. Um, like what really like made me feel really strange about the evaluation whether like rap, vocal, and dance is like they only gave the bonus votes to like who was ever number one like of the whole group like rap singing or dancing yeah. like they only give it to three people like i thought it was going to be whoever was the best out of their team right yeah but even that had like such inherent bias like do you not realize that being on a team with three people means it ups your chances like yeah, for, yeah even votes, if, yeah, yeah you, or less so votes say, so say there's like, less know, people like a thousand people, right? Like a thousand people voting for three girls versus a thousand people voting for six, seven girls is like totally different, right? So I think that was like the Bang Bang performance, I think. And like Bang Bang just yeah. had like... Because they had a fucking, shit ton they of called girls. Avengers, right? They just called it Avengers. And they were like so good, but all their votes just got disapparated because, yeah. you know, they were spread amongst like really, really good people. Yeah. Yeah. And like Kang Mina, who I think was not the, is not the best dancer by far um won those bonus votes and i was like the fuck like you're not the best dancer and then the second one was kim so hey like what you're not the best dancer like a lot of those people were just not yeah. like so hey was on a three-person team so like, like yeah she, like if you're ranking more like votes the best, yeah. if you're ranking the best vocal if you're ranking the yeah. best rapper best dancer like you did it the wrong way that's yeah. not the way that, to do that it. was definitely it was so strange though i actually didn't even understand the rules like, I, at first, I also thought like me. the first person of each team would get them. Yeah. And even then, I was like, then that's you... that's a little bit better. But then yeah. that's a lot of votes for so many people to get. Yeah. Turns out that was 100,000 wasn't even that many votes. Yeah. Um, but, like, uh, the, the other weird part about, um, not the not the not this challenge, but the next challenge, where, like, they they didn't even tell you how they pick their teams. Mm -hmm. They just like, they like the, the I think the top, the top whatever, no. the top 20 or whatever. Could just choose a room. No, not yeah. that one, not that one. It, 
Wait, maybe it was this one. The dance groups. Which one was the one where like they literally like they had a team captain mm -hmm. and then they got to choose the one, two, one. three, four, five. That was the first one. The evaluation, the the debut songs. Was that the debut song? They get one? to choose their members, and then the next group chooses their members. Yeah. And, the next and then the last group and just some of them stuck with all the stuck with all the leftovers, but also yeah. like they didn't even know each other very well at that yeah. point, and they didn't even know. Like I thought that was weird. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it was the one where they had to go to the rooms, and then like if you had too many members because they were learning the two challenges at the same time, like so they made half of the girls who relearn a whole relearn new song, a whole new thing. Even though some of them wouldn't even have a chance to even mm -hmm. do those things, and then it turned out to be kind of biased because some of the, because one group had a shit ton of lower tier people, so they yeah. all got kicked out. So they yeah. had to move other girls, and they yeah. had to relearn. Come, it was just like, why did you do it this way? Like, it, what are you? They're trying doing? to find. They're trying to like create Drama. trouble. Yeah. They're trying to like stir the pot. Right. Um, Makes for good TV. And when we say all that, but this is like you know being critical of. Uh, of your one of your our favorite things right mm -hmm. like again we are not normal ass k-pop reviewers we're no. positive over like y you can cr be critical of things you love oh yeah you that, should be critical of things you love I think. If, if there's a tagline of our show it should be that right yeah. you can be critical of things you love k-pop fans but you guys know that yeah because you guys are loyal listeners right yeah um i'm trying to think what else i really didn't like um i thought that so so the no, I, I wasn't specific on how the like the like even though I loved um, in the same place. Yeah. Uh, the fact that they they gave away so many votes that all of those girls in that one team made it to the top twenty two. Yeah. Like that. That bothered me a little bit because there were definitely some girls on that team that shouldn't have been in the top twenty two. Mm -hmm. I, I think. Yeah. Um, in the end, it didn't really matter. Because we know it was going to be in the top 11. Yeah. Um, slash top 12, 13. But, like, it didn't give some other girls a chance that maybe, maybe they could have been that number 11, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think someone, I, I read a comment that, like, this, this, it was a good thing it was best 11 because you knew the top three instantly, right? Mm -hmm. So it was never about who was top three. It was always about who is 8, 9, 10, 11. Right, eight, nine, ten, eleven was like mm -hmm. the battleground states. Mm -hmm. Right, everything else is like all Republican, all Democrats. Okay, right, yeah. like these were the battleground states, and that so was where it was California, most interesting. right, and like yeah, you know, Kim Se Jung is Texas, right? Like we, yeah, we you know. know, we you know. know, you know, we know. we go and Donald Trump, oh, God, oh no, but you know what? Feel the burn, man. I live here, so it doesn't matter. Well, Feel it will matter burn. if I go home. Uh, if we don't raise enough money on Patreon, I may go home to a state that voted. For Donald Trump. So think about that, okay? Don't let me go home to that state. Don't force him to go home. Don't to Donald force Trump. me. Um, although, you know, I, maybe we should put a disclaimer that says if, uh, you know, maybe you guys don't agree, you should never talk about politics, but I will be very clear that if Donald Trump is the next president of the United States, I, I be, may just stay here anyways. Um, Fuck $400 Patreons, I may just stay here anyways. That is so scary. Um, Anyways, enough about politics. Anyways. I think that is more than enough for this uh, podcast. Um, if you want to talk to us more about your experiences, what your favorite people are, what where are you on Team Sohe oh, yeah. or not Sohe, um, leave it in the comments below. Or, of course, if you're kind enough and nice enough to donate to us on Patreon, you can join us on Slack. Yeah, um, our chinga chat. Yeah, if you don't <laughs> know what Slack is, it's kind of a, a, a team messaging service mm -hmm. um and it's i think it's really cool we already have a bunch of people on it and uh i made a separate produce channel uh, nobody's in it except for me right now uh, maybe josh will join soon enough I but i am really really looking forward to this next year of um of what they're gonna produce yeah. um it may not all be good who knows but i am in deep mm -hmm. um it, What's that song? Into, into, into deep. Trying to hop above in my head. There they're going. You know, I used to listen to a lot of whiny music. Yeah. Used to love me some Song 41, man. Used to love me some of that whiny teenage music. And now look where we are at. Now we in the produce that I... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Last, last thing. 
Do you like the name IOI? No, I do not. Okay. I what? do not. Why? Why? Because there's already a boy group named 101. Is there? Yeah. They can't I, 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 I wouldn't call them 101, though, because that's... Yeah. You know, because I, cause I like it when it matches the number of people in the group, right? You don't call yourself 101 if you don't got 101 they should, they should call themselves Produced 11. Oh, that's just a bad name. Or 11 on top. What the... I mean, on top of what? I don't know. I, I don't have an alternative for a better name, okay? But I like, mean, really, it doesn't really matter, like, in the end. Actually, do I hate IOI that much? Do I hate it that much? I don't think I hate it that much. Okay. I'm kind of second-guessing this. I'm like half and half. I don't really like it, but I don't really hate it. Because, like, all names are stupid. Yeah, right? that's, that's like, why. All names, all K-pop yeah. names are. There, there, there's not a single one that's not dumb. But I, I do find it a little clever that that they, you know, it's one on one, but Can with letters. Do I do, yeah. I do appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and I know there's that stupid, silly drama of like the AOA oh, fans yeah, that's, that are yeah. angry because in Korean they it's sound AOA. Yeah, they sound very similar. AOA, AOA, AOA. Yeah. They're not so good at the uh, the Englishes. The Englishes. Um, so like they're like change your name, you dumb bitches. Um, but you know, K-pop fans are very, very vindictive. <laughs> They are, they are. If the fan name for IOI is not the producers, I don't know what. Yeah. Like, then they down fucked up. Or Nation's producers or producers yeah. or something. Yeah. But, uh, okay. I think that's it. Uh, this was a super long, super in-depth Produce 101 podcast. Hopefully, if you made it all the way to the end, uh, you watched it all for yourself, okay? I'm really tired. I've been up for 22 hours at this point. So... See you guys next week for our main episode. Bye.